Geek Con, all blended with wit, sarcasm, and a pub-like atmosphere. We're adults talking about adult topics and using adult language. We laugh and make jokes about almost everything. We don't intend to upset, but some folks have their feelings hurt easily. This is all done in humor in the style of the great offenders such as George Carlin, Red Fox, Lenny Bruce, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, Wanda Sykes, Sam Kinnison, and George Lopez, Lisa Lampanelli, Chris Rock, and others. So grab your vice of choice, sit back, relax, and get ready to enjoy yourself in the company of great people, hot toddies, and guests alike, because here we come. Put that long day behind you, good times lie ahead, with company worth keeping, that'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear, cause we're the toss And welcome to Wednesday, July 18th episode of Talk at the Tavern. I am your host, Travis Silver. My vices today are coffee. I'm going to get done with the coffee. Even if I don't finish it, just when I go, I'm done with you, coffee. Brandy. Paul Maison. Four year. A reasonable brandy. It's not the gin. We're still pimping for gin. There's no gin for gin punk week. Oh, and I have a uh, Edge Maduro, which I took like two puffs off yesterday and put down. I just never picked it back up. So, oh, wait, reverbing. Stupid reverb. Hold on a second, John. Thanks for letting me know. Is it him? Is it me? Is it us? Well, usually if I shut that down and then bring it back up. Mm. I see otter. <laughs> yeah, you do. So, John, is that... Did that fix it? Let me know. It's just my... Well, so it's just you. Booming, echoey, voice, 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 voice. Yeah, okay. Spin, we'll go spin, with that. Spin, 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 spin. No, that did not fix it. Okay. Let's just try this. Uh-huh. What? Okay. So, uh... Does that fix it, John? Can you still... Andrea, say something. Let me test some levels. Something. Testing the levels. No, I bet that fixed it. Oh. See, it's a weird thing. On the bottom of my... I have like five different sound levels. And one of them is audio input capture. And sometimes people are like, Oh, Travis, you have an echo. Okay. And then other times when I turn it off, they're like, Oh, we can't hear... Bob the Squirrel in Syracuse. And I'm like, it's, it's just like random shit they can't hear. Andrea, why don't you introduce yourself and tell everybody what your vice is? Well, I was just letting you rant, because that's... Who's Bob the Squirrel? I don't know, but he's in fucking Syracuse, and he won't leave me alone. He's well, always like, nuts, 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 nuts. You're nuts. nuts, nuts you're nuts. nuts. Um, because I had to run to work today, I didn't eat breakfast, so now don't, I have... Don't let her fool you. She drove to work, people. I have huh? crates with lingonberries, oh, butter, oh, that's stuff. Uh, it's cray-cray. And, of course, tea and my Batman glass. Ooh. Those are my vices. I hear myself. You hear yourself. Yeah, and it's not my... It's not Twitch because it's on mute, but I hear myself. No, it, it's because I'm sharing system sound, so my desktop audio is coming across twice. Hit mute on Twitch. Thanks, Skype. Ugh. No, I, I don't have Twitch playing. It's... it's oh, well, whatever. Don't show me. Now, let me ask you, do you hear yourself echo now? Um, do I hear myself echo? Yes, I do. Okay, so that didn't take that away. Let's come over here. I gotta stop sharing sounds. You guys don't get to hear music anymore. You guys? You mean me? Well, just anybody who's. Yeah, it's. Uh, you can share it when you do music. Other than that, turn it off. Whatever. I don't know. We were supposed to work on that yesterday. 
but then Skype update. I know. Anyway. Do you have an echo still? Do I have an echo? I don't hear it. Yay! That's because I stopped sharing. But my camera's good. And yesterday I had it running, and you didn't hear it. You, there was no I, echo. So. It's Wednesday. It only happens on Wednesdays. And uh, I know there's not a lot of you here, but if you're not a subscriber, you'd like to be a subscriber. I have put up our subscriber goal instead of one or two a day. What I do did is change it to how many we currently have. Plus sharing isn't caring. Speaking of sharing, hit that share button. Yeah, <laughs> it's a. Uh, we do have. You know what I should do? I should turn that whole. Speaking of tweaking, thanks for bringing that up. Let's just pop over here to stream elements where, you know how we made like that sharing thing? No. Here. Um, you know how we, we set up the timer so it automatically says every once in a while, click share below. Mm -hmm. Instead of that, why don't I come over here and delete that timer? But before I do that, mm -hmm. we're going to do under chat commands create a new chat command call it share user everyone response there we go submit so now instead of it popping up automatically on a timer I'm gonna go turn that off when we do this, mm -hmm. what do we do? Oh, hold on a second. Don't keep me in suspense. What are we doing? There you go. Exclamation point share. Mm. And that tells people to use that share button. I think that's better oh. than being on a timer. Well, there we go. And I'm going to do that. Oh, see that? I tweeted and it said it. There we go. That lets everybody know. Which, by the way, here's what we're doing today, guys. Uh, mm. We had a bit of a, you know, standard life kerfuffle yesterday, and it reminded me that life is, well, it, it can be extremely short, and that doesn't matter whether you live 12 years or 120 years, or it could be really long. My volume seems to look. Thank you, John, for all. It's because he had a hair. <laughs> I'm just watching the cat. Uh, there you go. That'll be better. It, uh, it got turned down because sometimes when you scroll over it. Thank you. This is why we need you, the viewers. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate that extra input, John. No matter how much I harass people for saying things like that, I always appreciate it, guys. But anyhow, life can be amazingly short or life can be amazingly long. Either way, you don't want to hit the end of your time and look back and go, Oh, man, if only I did whatever. And I've done some research. And by the way, there are articles out there online which basically go, hey, this is what most people on their deathbed regret doing or not doing. And by the way, it is almost always things they didn't do. Mm -hmm. Almost always. And I wrote a book about it. Want to hear it? Here it goes. Here it goes. Ah. I feel like I need to open that curtain to get some light in here. It's I, I feel I'm a little dim. I think you're edgy, <laughs> Um. Now, now for our regular viewers, you guys have watched me reference this book, 27 Thoughts on Enjoying Life, which is free mm -hmm. on Amazon. Um, you can get it by scrolling down below the video, and you'll see my books, and it's on there, and it's free. This one here is not free. It's another one that I wrote. And hold on. Let me see if I can. Meh, not that it's way. It's like 99 cents for the Kindle version, right? Uh, something like that, yeah. I see my reflection. You do. There okay. we go. Do it that way. But anyhow, you guys get the idea. It's down there. And I just want to... Whether we discuss one thing out of this book or whether we discuss the whole book, I just want to kind of touch on it today. Because uh, every once in a while we need reminded that life is temporary. 
and need to enjoy what you have. And uh, life is meant for living, folks. That's all there is to that. It's not about suffering. It's not about working. Now, working is important. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying stop working because that pays for the shit you want to do. I'm just mm-hmm. saying maybe there's more than just TV. You know, I could point right at John and give great examples of good ways to live because that man reaches out to people. He helps people. He's kind to people constantly. Yes. Um, and I think John is a, is a great damn example of how to live. It's He doesn't stay home and <laughs> mentally or physically just rot away till nothing's left. Hey, there's a butt. It's a booty. It's a booty. <laughs> Speaking of things that John does, do you want to go into that? Um, yes, it is. The Gloucester Library, August 11th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's the Gloucester, comma, comma what, what does CO? Gloucester County. I can't, I, I can't think today. It's been a day. Um, it's a Comic Con. In Gloucester. At a library. Library. August eleventh. I'll do that better. Gloucester County Public Library, twenty eighteen Comic Con. There you go. You know and there's the website. Where's the website? Where's the thing? I can't see anything anymore. Can you see the website? The website, the little teeny thing in the green part? Mm-hmm. Let's see, what is it? Gloucester and Info slash Public Library. Public Library, okay. There we go. That is teeny. That is an odd place to put that information. Did John say it was cannolis? Did John You're say it was cannolis? He did. I'm going to eat my crepes on mute so you don't have to hear that. <laughs> well, I'm going to no, listen. There are no cannolis. Okay. I'm going to put on my reading glasses and start this up. Oh, let's do an opening toast first. Hmm. Okay, here we go. You know what? Don't encourage Skype like it did something right with putting your little hearts all over the place. Thanks, it's Skype. It's not what do anymore. Uh, guys, don't forget to join us tonight for an awesome space adventure with the corn nuts. <laughs> it could be yeah. John. I, I don't know who went. <laughs> Let's put it in a little curve so it looks more like an accent line than a URL. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, Shh! Don't tell anyone. Okay. Uh, here's just to remembering, enjoying life every day, and doing the things that you want to do to make life worth living. Oh yeah. Like touching my cats. We have a few of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think I'll light this cigar first. I'm clean off my glasses too. Oof. While I'm doing that, I can talk about tonight on Andrea's channel. Andrea, make sure you do a shout out for yourself, please. Um, there's a new bot in the stream. I want to make sure it gets a hold of your channel and hangs out with us tonight. Um, we're going to be doing the space adventure of the corn nuts. We have two new players joining us. I'm very excited about that. One is Robert Turk of Wicked Clever Games, who you might have known at one point in time as Gander Snitched. Um, the other one is Stephen Clifton, who's also known as Monkey of Vandalia Con. And he's one of the organizers, as well as a, the kind of the IT sound like guy. So they'll be joining us tonight into perpetuity. Doesn't that sound like the eternity of puberty? Perpetuity. Or maybe a pituitary gland that is suspected of a crime. Did you get the usual perpetuities? Put them against the wall. Hmm. Perhaps. I need mental help. Okay. I have to blow... If you ever go to relight a cigar and you're not a cigar... Yeah, okay, you know what? Let me finish the sentence, even though I cut myself at the wrong place. <laughs> if you're going to relight a cigar, blow through it to get rid of some of that nasty taste of the relight. Um, because it gets a little bitter at the end. 
Are you, are you totally applying that to blowjobs in your head now? <laughs> okay, twice. There you go. <laughs> now, we got this look here. Which I only put out. That's funny. I've got a mistake on the inside. Now, the title of the book, 27 Thoughts on Having No Regrets in Life. It's a long damn title. Inside on the copyright page, I have the original title, which was 20 thoughts, 27 Thoughts for a Good Life. So, I guess that'll need corrected. Thanks, editor. Um... Weren't you your own editor? No, I'm never my own editor. Oh. It's just wrong. No writer should ever be their own editor. They get stupid mistakes. So, <laughs> stop making Skype feel like it did something right, damn it. Okay, so, um, right, um... I had something else to say, I don't know. Okay, having no regrets in life. Let's go on with this. Back to stalking. Okay, John. Sell many, many comics, my friend. Oh, you know what else I did, Andrea? Isn't I... Wednesday comic day? Oh, man, it probably is. He's probably uh, working like a dog over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if it, working like a dog for him means, you know, he just called in extra employees, too. But there's... He can work like a dog. There's a groomer's next door. It's very true. Very true. Okay. I'm doing What this. were you saying? Hold on a second. Copying a link. And this I'll put on your thing tonight, too. This is a list of the Star Wars books and stuff of the game that would be handy. But basically, I made another Amazon wish list for gaming. Yeah. But it's not a Star Wars game. No, it's just based it's on it. It's explain using that, that. that gaming system. And I'll explain that again tonight on your actual channel. Basically, there are game systems that we're using because I like the game system for what we're doing. And uh, in this case, for our space adventure, we, we are using the Star Wars gaming system as well as the, the Star Wars universe, but we're not part of the... Star Wars continuity. Okay, so the dedication in this book is to my son, friends, and anyone else who listened to me spout ideas and suggestions I have learned. Remember what I was going to say. I researched this, and as I said earlier, there are websites online that go through, you know, we interviewed this many people who are essentially over 80 or on their deathbed or whatever, and we asked them what their regrets in life is or what advice they would give younger folks. Uh, for living a good life, and, and and a lot of this is incorporated into this, as well as my own personal interviews with people of certain ages, um, and, and by certain ages, I really mean a span of ages, because it changes as you go through life, what's important, what takes uh, precedence, and if we can learn some of this stuff that folks who have lived three or four score of years and we could take this to heart before we're hitting retirement age. Might have a better life. That's all I'm saying. Mm. Um, I, I'm seeing if the introduction is even worth reading. It's a short introduction this time. There we go. There is a part, well, this... <laughs> well, this is a whole book of those pearls of wisdom. In no way is it a complete life guide, but it is the essentials as I see them. And to be clear, just because I know the value of these things doesn't mean I'm wise enough to follow them all. Good luck in being smarter than I am. There's more to it. Okay, so the first thing in having no regrets in life is save money. Now, this is very black and white. 
And most folks know they have to work for a living, but what many realize is that you have to save money if you ever want to stop needing to work so you can live. This includes retirement. We are not taught these things anymore. Our modern society has come to rely on loans for so many things. We've become accustomed to not owning our homes, our cars, even our basic electronics and appliances. Are They're on loan because you owe money for them. I recommend you stop that trend, and the best way is learn to save. I could write a whole book on that topic alone, but other people already have. The simple math is to put away a minimum of 10% of any money you make, but 20% is much better. Don't touch it. This isn't for repairing your cars or vacations or anything else. This is money so you can stop working one day. Use coupons, shop sales, buy generic things in, if you can. Um, and don't buy tons of useless stuff you don't need. People with money follow these rules, and because of it, they keep more of their money. Oh, and whenever you can, pay cash, especially for big purchases like your car or house. At least put down big down payments. The less you pay on any finance charge, the more money you save. And that means the less money you waste. And if you are – and I've ha heard financial advisors go, oh, no, always have a mortgage on your house. Get that car loan. It helps your credit. Here's the bottom line. What helps your credit is having cash, having things worth money, having things the creditors can take or see that they know you'll pay your bill. That's what helps your credit. Yes, you can establish credit by getting a credit card and keep paying on it, but that is a trap. I will go so as paranoid far as to say set up by the credit card company so you get a damn credit card. Um, the bottom line is if you've never had a credit card and you walk into a credit office going, I own my home, I paid cash, I own my car, I paid cash, um, I own this, I own that. I have $100,000 in the bank. You're going to get a loan, credit or no credit, because <clears throat> they're going to run a credit check. So, and also, if you are saving money and buying things cash, you don't need a loan. Now, with that being said, just put money away. Some of this advice on that one topic I have followed. I own my house outright, as well as pretty much everything else I have, but I'm really bad at the savings, and I sure am nowhere near what I'd need to retire. Okay. Number two. I'm told... Andrea, we're going to put her in a striped shirt and white face paint and just make her mime her way through the whole episode. <sighs> yeah, this one. Pursue your dreams and passions. Life is meant to be enjoyed, but balanced with our responsibilities. Too many people forget that. They go to work, come home, watch TV, eat dinner, and go to bed. On their days off, they spend a little money and say that this must be happiness. When we're younger, we have passion and dreams. We play instruments, dance like crazy monkeys, write poetry, want to visit every corner of the world, act in movies, parachute, dive with dolphins, and so many other things. As many people get older, they forget they can still do these things. They find excuses like not enough time, job is too demanding, kids make it impossible, can't afford it, and tons of other reasons. The good news is that it doesn't have to be that way. You can still find time for what you love. The bad news is you may have to give up other things to free up money and time and be able to live your dreams. You can't spend six hours in front of the TV or computer every night if you want to learn to play an instrument or learn a new language. You can't buy that overpriced car and still afford to travel to foreign countries. The best news is that the choice of how you spend your time and money is up to you. This is essentially budgeting, people. I want to say. Please. You can sit in front of your, now, you can sit in front of your computer for six hours and learn a language. True. I do that. Not six hours at a time. Half hour to an hour at a time. Almost daily. For a language. 
you can get the basics, but then you have to go out and use it. Yeah. So, and then I work and save and I'm going to go to Paris and use it. Or Quebec. Yeah, that's, that's more attainable. I still want to go to Paris. Oh, both. Both. Why can't it be both? Um, Quebec will be first. I, I, Canada will be first because that's easier. That's more attainable because you could drive there. So I don't want to swim. This whole topic right here is about budgeting time and money. No money? We all get how you budget money. But the bottom line is people are like, oh, look, I have a brand new car and the payment is only 400 a month. And I'm like, 400 a month? Oh, my God. You know what you can get for 400 a month? I got a round trip ticket for 500 to Europe. Well, the thing is, you know, if you look for deals and you plan, things can happen. Like, yes, we found a great airline, good price. New people over there, so that cut down on a lot of costs for hotels and and things. So, yeah, it's doable. And if you sit here and talk about how, oh, you went out to dinner and saw the latest movie and you've pretty much done this every week for the past month and a half, you know, for two people, you're looking at 60 to $100 for each one of those. That's another $400 a month that just whoosh, gone. Still hasn't, still haven't seen Infinity Wars, but there's Redbox and there's free codes. There's ways to see the latest, well, kind of latest, greatest. Or you know what? Buy it on DVD three to six months later. Same price as essentially one One movie tickets. Mm -hmm. You own it and then you can cook it. And I am not, you know what? If you are just passionate about going to the movies and getting that popcorn, having a great dinner, absolutely. But if you're whining that you can't go see the Grand Canyon or Big Ben in London. You have to pick and choose. Yeah, exactly. My car is nine years old. Works great. Still needs some repairs because it's nine years old. But the bottom line is. Paid for. Yeah, I don't have a payment. And by Mine the way. Too. Saved up, paid cash. It's got a Bose speaker system. It's got all leather interior it's a decent car, but it's nine years old. It's not brand new. It's I finally old. have a CD player because I found one inexpensive on Amazon and put it in myself. <clears throat> so and now nobody is, uses CDs anymore. Pick and choose, guys. Pick and choose with your time and your money, but especially time. People look at Andrea and I and they go, oh my God, you do so many incredible things. How do you do it? Well, you make time for it. Well, and see, sometimes you got to choose. Working 50 to 80 hours a week to get that money or not working that much and having time to do things, but you just have to change the way you do it. Yeah. And the same thing goes for when people are like, oh, Travis, you've written... You've written books. Mm -hmm. I want to write a book. I'm like, well, then do it. And they're like, oh, I don't have the time. I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. So did you binge watch that latest show on Netflix? Oh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, there's 23 hours of your life. Mm -hmm. And if you can write a 1,000 words an hour like I do, that's 23,000 words in the time it took you to binge watch that. You chose to watch that show instead. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you love. But quit whining about not doing. Because you made your choice. Right. You always look for a solution. And it might not always be apparent. So I think it boils down to enjoy what you're going to do. And if you're not, if you're going to feel like you're missing out because you're doing one thing, yeah. then don't do that thing. Like I want a game. I really yeah. wanted to game. Yeah. And so I started a channel here on Twitch. And everybody's like, what? I don't care if anyone watches it. It gives me a schedule that I have to stick to so I can play my games. And then I get my games. And if people join in, poof. And I love the throw, game. Yeah, people throw bits where it's cool. That's just bonus. But I'm going to do it anyway because I want to. Yeah. And like I was saying, I love the game. I love to play. I love to run a game. I love to tell that story with other people. So I was all on board for it. And now, A, we get social interaction. (laughs) With people we don't normally do because a lot of people we know are from conventions and they're everywhere else around the country or the world. 
well, the beauty part, like Monday nights. Now, I've known Ed since 98, I think, maybe 99. Uh, so going on 20 years. But as well as we get along and have a good time together, we almost never get together. Hey, there's Chuck. She says, bone us. <laughs> yes, I said that. Uh, good to see Wait till Thursday, because then it's after hours. There you go. I can't say it like Elizabeth without laughing. Uh, it don't matter. It's funny. So, so yeah. I've got the stream elements down to one one timer thing, so it only tells you to go below and look. By the way, I did order a talk of the Tavern Pint Glass. Just one for me when I'm on air. Because I'm using that. Because you're using... <sighs> it's a... But yeah, I'll have that. I don't know whenever it gets here. Coming from Cafe Press, I don't know. It could be next week. It could be a month and a half from now. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> but anyhow, yeah. Dole out your time. Dole out your money so you can do what you want to do. Chuck knows what I'm talking about here. Because Chuck... Maybe not, because he just heard bone us. <laughs> He's busy boning himself. Uh... But he's picked up and traveled to a cigar hearth to hang out with other cigar guys and have a good time. If I'm not mistaken, Chuck, correct me if you have not done that, but I believe you have. And basically, you choose what you're going to do and how you spend your time and money. And, you know, that's that's that. Oh, wait, Gus, who's coming? Paul's. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Thanks for the follow. You're oh, here, buddy. Here, yeah. so he's, he's gone on a few occasions to her, so it looks like there we go. Yeah, so that's a matter of I haven't been to one, but when one of the fat boys came near here to work, we went to hang out at um, one of the cigar stores cigar with our realm with yeah. Rich Kirshner. That was fun because there was a duck and donuts right next door. <laughs> I was yeah. very happy. I, I think his uh, fat boy name is is Darth Shite, if I'm not mistaken. With a Y, so it could Them be... Them and their name. Shit, but, oh, yeah. my... Yeah. Uh, funny I'm okay with the name they gave me. I'm okay with Mr. Pringles. That doesn't bother me at all. Because I'm salty, yet delicious. But you pop! <laughs> you can't stop. <laughs> oh. Oh. Don't touch me! Don't touch me! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who half the people are, but the names amuse me, so. I'm going to show her my old face. Oh, oh, oh. Office space. Check it out. Okay, did we cover... There you uh, go. You see that? Yeah, there you go. That's his old face. <laughs> Pursue your dreams and passions. We got that, so basically, <laughs> choose what you're going to do. Okay, here's another great one. I love this one. And by the way, for those of you just joining us, we're talking about how to have no regrets in life. I, I, I wrote a book on it. Um, but we're just going to... Well, here, here it goes. Go down below the video and you can buy a copy yourself. There you go. But uh, we had a reminder yesterday that life is short and enjoy it. So we're going over this. Live your bucket list. A little while back, someone asked me what I'd put on my bucket list. Red one, a yellow one, a purple one. Oh. Long kind of bucket list. Wait, yeah, I'm going toned. You two come in on Saturday. I'll Chuck, figure out what that meant and tell me what it meant, because uh, I don't know what you did. What? Okay. We'll get back to that. Um, Sorry for that. Somebody asked me what I'd put on my bucket list, and it took me a week to come up with something because everything I thought of I'd already done or was working on doing. Even the couple things I thought of that I hadn't done yet, they were in the planning stages. I was living my bucket list and still am. I'm just still trying to figure out what the hell he's doing. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I'm going to need you to come in on Saturday. That'd be great. Yeah. Oh, oh, got it. Yeah, Lumberg. Um, we I'm saw the him, the actor, in another show just the other day. What were we watching? 
Was it cock blockers? I don't know. Anyhow. Maybe. Oh my god, that movie's hilarious. Let me finish this. So I was living my bucket list. And this relates to the previous entry, pursuing your dreams and passion, and they go hand in hand. So many folks wait until there's what they perceive as almost t no time left in their lives to do the cool things they always talked about doing. So make your bucket list when you're 16, 66, any other age, and begin checking things off by making them happen now. By the way, your bucket list at 20 is very different from what it is at 40 and what it is at 60. So you can keep adding to it and whatnot. Um, don't wait until you're running out of time. Begin living life to the fullest. Today, plan to do something you want to do tomorrow. Okay. Yes. I, I know this group, and that's okay. I put, what is something you enjoy in life? I'm just waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Going to go back to the boning, masturbation. <laughs> when another person's involved, it's kind of nice. <laughs> There we go. Soft hands and tissues. Soft hands and tissues. Oh, I didn't realize my microphone was put up. Oh, well, that explains why you were... I wonder if that's why you were echoing. Because you had your mic right by your earphone, and it was catching your own voice. Maybe, because I put it up while I was eating. Skydiving. Hiking. Chuck, have you, have you gone skydiving a few times? I want to... But I'd like to also, and I do actually have, we heard a comedian talking about, oh, it was Jerry Seinfeld actually. Uh, why do they make you wear a helmet when skydiving? I mean, frankly, if you land on your head, pretty much done no matter what. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been kind of curious about that too, is it just to make you feel safe? I, I don't know. So yeah, Chuck, have you gone skydiving? Do you, are you an instructor? Can I come to your house and you show us how to skydive and we go skydiving with you? <laughs> nice, nice. That's, What's there's the only like one place here. It, it's kind of pricey, but oh. you know, you don't want to. There's like six places within an hour drive. Out here? Yeah. I know of one because drive by it all the time. Um, yeah. Chuck, what I'd rather do is go to young? Europe. Oh. I'd rather go to Europe again. I think I would too. I mean, if we're looking at. 500 to a thousand dollars. It's not that much to jump. It's not 500 to a thousand to jump. Well, that's why I'm asking what it costs. I mean, I know. I, I want to say around. I don't know. Well, if you piss off the wrong guy, they'll push you out of a plane for free. Yeah. About 120. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, it's not that much, but, you know, he went nine times. Two or three, that's a Europe vacation. <laughs> well, I, I think going at least once, uh, good enough, Chuck. It, it's a ballpark. That's all we need. Yeah. And also, I your area to our area. But I'm older now, and the other day I walked and my knee went boom. I, I don't think I want to jump out of a plane and hit the ground like that because I don't think my knee would recover. Yeah. From what I understand, you do hit the ground hard no yeah. matter. That parachute is not gently setting you down. You're still fucking falling. I'm not in my 20s anymore. What I want to is not a very high priority anymore. So. Yeah. I think, like I said, for a once in a lifetime thing, I do it. As I get older, though, it becomes less. It, come, it goes down the list. It does. It, it becomes less exciting and whatnot um right now an attainable thing i believe that i that's on my bucket list is to have jim gaffigan on the show and say after hours yeah got to with other people so you know give it time give it time but that right there just so that i could play that before the game on thursdays why don't you go tweet to him right now going jim can you record me a quick video of uh, saying this is after hours with talk of the tavern and this way we have the video and then i can go clip the sound of after hours 
Oh, comedians, they crack me up. <laughs> it's because you're so, nuts, and that's what they do to nuts. <laughs> oh, Ready for the okay. next one? I, I'm just reading because, okay, what are you enjoying life? You said soft hands and tissues. So, what's something on your bucket list? Chuck? Chuck to be one people. of those guys that lives his bucket list as I'm talking about. So, but well, there's there may, there's got to be something you haven't done yet. So, what's let's, something? Let's see if he just types redhead. <laughs> Could be. We'll find out. I'll go on with the next one. Well, then we'll come back to that. Okay. Make time for family and friends. I don't know about you. But I've been estranged from my family. I watch others with their family, and it makes me happy to see the community that has decades of roots. It gives a family that, that a family gives someone. Um, as I got older and had a son of my own, I wanted him to have that also. When I realized I couldn't do it with blood relations, I turned to my friends. A very old adage says, "Friends are the family which you choose," and that's the truth. If you choose your friends carefully. I've had friends that have done more for me than my family ever will, and I've done the same for others. The point is, work is fine, but it is the people in your life that make you feel full, fun, beautiful. Objects never give the pleasure that good company that cares about you and your well-being can give. Make time to spend with your family, whether it's your parents, cousins, spouse, children, siblings, or whoever, or your friends. These are the people who make any achievement feel even better. Take care of them first and foremost. So let's... Uh, okay. Mm -hmm, go ahead. He says Ireland. That's and his like wife that. is a partial redhead. Um, he said completely Appalachian Trail. Of course, okay. Here's the question. <laughs> Which part is the redhead at the top or the bottom? Mm -hmm. And Chuck, if you want to go to Ireland... Wow Airlines, I think they fly out of Atlanta and you're down there. Five hundred dollars mm -hmm. we got a round trip ticket to London. They also fly to I want to say Belfast and Dublin. Well, and we had a layover a stop in Iceland, which is awesome. So And by the way, you can add like a hundred bucks to your ticket and basically tell them how long you want to stay your layover in Iceland to be. So instead of 20 minutes or two hours, you can let it be four days and you could run the fuck around Iceland, get back on the plane, go to Ireland. Depends on the shave schedule. Okay. I'm done. Oh my gosh. Um, Welcome to the tavern. There we go. So yeah, Wow Airlines, W-O-W Airlines.com. Uh, great prices, man. And they only fly out of a few airports. They always have a layover in Iceland. But yeah, check it out. See if it goes out of Atlanta, because yeah, for a thousand bucks for you and your wife, you gotta sell the kids so you can afford the trip back, I guess. Um, yeah, hit up Ireland and then bring an extra thousand or two. Well, I know I asked for hotels. This is funny. Oh, yeah. um, what you do? Plan ahead of time because you can get discounts. And see, we picked our seats. You pay a little bit extra to pick your seats. I've never really been on an airplane before, and I wanted to be by the window so I could see where I was going to die. <laughs> if you don't do that, it, it's a little bit cheaper. So, But still, it's good. So anyhow, just a suggestion, and if it gets down the road and you go, I don't remember the airline, but you remember who said it, yeah, just drop one of us a line or phone. I think you got my number. Anyhow, <clears throat> uh, so spending time with friends and family. Physical objects, the best car, the newest video game system, the 72-inch TV, they're great. <laughs> they're not as great as a good friend or family if you're lucky enough to have family that you like. Um, so there's a reason when we do these shows, we have Ed and Kevin and Elizabeth on Monday nights. There's a reason we ask the other gamers to come on. Chuck, there's a reason we talk to you when you're in chat. All these things make our life better. And, yeah, without people to share it with, 
life quite isn't as isn't quite as rich and full. You could be alone really easy, but it's just nicer to have folks around you who you can share with and who support you, like a jockstrap. Not much to say on so that aggressive. One. Not much to say on that one there, Andrea. For what? The uh, whole uh, friends, family. You're here. I'm eating. Okay. I'm eating crepes. Well, this is the last of it. I told you I'm probably not going to talk much, so I will just make faces. Oh, it's fine. Just checking before I went on. Oh, here's something very important. A lot of us, the jock step for friendship. <clears throat> That's what you are to me, Chuck. Um, by the way, I like the fact that you go by Chuck because nobody else does. So I kind of like it. Hey, Kennedy, how are you? Sorry to have to bail on the game last night, but we are talking about having no regrets in life. So this next one, live true to yourself, not others. Now, this one could be hard to understand until you've gone through a certain amount of challenges in your life. On the other hand, some folks are born understanding this. The old saying of you can't make everybody happy is key to this. The truth is, you can't make anyone happy except for yourself. Now, if you think that's wrong, think about when you're in a bad mood and somebody tries to cheer you up. If you don't want to cheer up, they can't make you happy. Only when you choose to let them lift your spirits do things brighten up for you. You choose to let them make you happy. Thus, you made yourself happy by appreciating their efforts. Without your own consent to be happy, you would have stayed miserable and cranky. Living true to yourself means taking care of yourself. Living your dreams. Allowing yourself to be happy. Don't try to find happiness in making other people's lives better. If you're living true to yourself, then the people in your life will reap those benefits as a fringe benefit. But trying to live your life to make others happy is a plan doomed to failure in the long run. Um. <laughs> really, the fourth. Nice. Charles Henry White, the fourth. Squirrel, the first. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you can't please everyone and you can live a good life and it can help make other people happy. But if that is your whole goal in life to make someone else happy, whether it's one person or many people, you're going to be doomed to failure, especially if they buy in on this plan and suddenly you're responsible for their happiness. That means anytime they're not happy, it's your fault. And you got to try harder. It's draining and exhausting and unhealthy and uh, dysfunctional. Okay, it's your job to make you happy. And if you're a happy person, people will want to be around you. People want to interact with you. People. Will if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. That's right. If you're happy and you know it, pass the clap to the next person. To make everyone happy and no one will like it. You try to make everyone happy and no one will like it. That's true, too. Whether it's because of envy or whether it's because of... Just don't try to please everyone. <clears throat> it's a dumb move. The this is not a porno, people. Um, as for... You know, there's even times where, where I tell Andrea, you know, sure, she's pissy or upset or sad or whatever. I go in there and I do stupid things to try to make her smile. But the bottom line is, and she knows this, <laughs> yeah, no And now one. Chuck has to clap. <laughs> Chuck, I think I'm a little bit older than you, but you might have seen it. There was, back on HBO in the late 70s, early 80s, they had a short called The Wizard of, I forget, but it was stop motion action. 
But in the part, the guy's pedaling along on his 10-speed. Somebody throws a cigarette butt or a cup out the window, and he picks it up and throws it back in their window, you know, because they're littering. And a chick in another car claps. And then he sees her in the elevator later, and he turns to her, and he's like, Hey, you're the chick that gave me the clap this morning. And everybody else in the elevator goes <laughs> up against the wall. So, did you say chicken? Why was the chicken in the elevator? <laughs> to get to the second floor. Duh. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, Andrea and I we've di- we've discussed this often. It's I can do things to make her happier or influence her mood, but I can't make her happy, and it's not my job. Um, it just like it's not her job to make me happy. And it's sometimes, well, at least for her and I, our job to remind the other, hey, you're miserable and quit that. And then you go away for five minutes and you let them wrap their head around the idea because nobody wants to fucking hear that shit. But it doesn't mean it's, it's not true and that you don't take them in and go, no, I am really not happy today and I'm going to change that because I, I, I want to be happy. And ha- oh, by the way, Jamin, are you actually listening? If you are, thank you for the postcard today, which has Pat Sajak next to a guy, Pat Sajak of Wheel of Fortune next to a guy with an eye patch, and it says, "Her, I thought you didn't like Wheel of Fortune. Me, I'm not changing this channel until I see this guy ask for an eye. And I tell you what, no pun intended." <laughs> If um, I had an eye patch, yeah, I'd be that guy. And I'd be like, when I got to that point, I'd be like, Pat, I've been waiting to do this. Vanna, may I have an eye, please? I would just make a thing out of it. So they, Yeah, you would. There's a laugh, is there? So, But thank you, Jamie. Appreciate that. Oh, you know, I didn't even read the back. I was uh, so busy enjoying the front. See, that's a part of the whole... Um, no regrets, enjoying life. Those postcards. Friends, and just keeping in touch and little stupid things you do, you know? True, true. Postcards are great. Love the postcards. And Kennedy, we understand, bud. Didn't, didn't go to work today, but had a friend have a book reading in New York City. By the way, Kennedy, as a moderator, there is a new command you can put out there. If you type exclamation point share and hit enter, you'll see what it does. I'll let you do that and give that a try. Chuck, if you hang out consistently, I'd make you a moderator one day. I'll have more moderators than I have people who aren't. Um, Whatever. At the bottom line, there will be one day when we have hundreds or thousands of people watching the show. There you go. Thank you, Kennedy. Appreciate that. Anytime you feel so inclined to do that, feel free to do that. And that lets folks know to click the share button. Um, oh, I do the app now. Yeah, if I can get a dozen or 15, by the time we get, you know, a huge viewership, I'll have a nice moderator team in place where there's always somebody here. Mm-hmm. And for the new people joining us, here's to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the tavern. I have a drink somewhere. Here, here. Today we are discussing how to have no regrets in life. This is research I've done by talking to friends, strangers, people who go, oh, we're on our 50th wedding anniversary. I'm like, what do you attribute that to? Uh, My older friends who are like, you know, I'm going to die soon. I'm like, so what's the secret to life? 42? Mm-hmm. That's the answer to everything, right? <clears throat> Life, universe, and everything. And I wrote a book about it. Want to hear it? Here it go. Here it goes. <laughs> okay. Work to live, don't live to work. I covered a little bit this in the friends and family part, but now I'll cover this specific point more in depth. Work is part of life and gives us many things. Money to spend on necessities and frivolities, a sense of identity, a feeling of accomplishment, a sense of community and belonging, and more. 
but rarely is it ultimately fulfilling. As important as work is, it's merely a tool so you may enjoy life overall. If it consumes all your time and energy, you won't have either of those things when you're with people you love and doing things you enjoy. Always make time to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Otherwise, what's the point of labor? Mm. And Chuck, you're correct. And we have debated that before we ever went on Twitch and YouTube. We're like, hmm. What was it? I can't read it. I'm actually trying to fix the overlay for tonight. <clears throat> you asking what Chuck said? He said, just install yeah. cameras, then someone can always be watching. Hmm. I always feel like someone's watching. Hmm. Me. I messed that up. That's okay. I knew what you meant. So, yeah, with uh, working is great, but some people live to work. And they give the reasons. Oh, I've got to support my family. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And then they never have time with that family that they're trying to support. Sometimes it's better to not have the best possession so you can enjoy the other time that you have. Like I said, what's the point of working if you can't enjoy what you bring home? I don't think there is a point. And again, the other people who just sit home, play video games, watch Netflix all day, and don't keep a job, quit it. Get a job. Not worried about a haircut. Oh, here's one. <clears throat> be honest and express your feelings. When dealing with life, it's often easier to be happy if you simply let the people around you know what you want and how you feel about something. Hiding your feeling only leads to an explosion of some sort later. It's easy to lose opportunities just because you're too shy or nervous to step up and let people know that you want it or don't want it. This can be a fine line and only practice and common sense can truly guide you in this. Being honest and expressing yourself is a selective thing and knowing when to do it is as important as doing it. Don't bludgeon or bully others just to get your way. We know plenty of people that take, 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 take. They tell you what they want. They expect you to give it to it. You know, Kennedy, we've said before, there's nothing wrong with sitting down and binge-watching Netflix. Just make sure that's what you want to do. Make sure that's how you have chosen to enjoy this time. And if you walk away from that Netflix going, well, I didn't wash my dishes, or I didn't write a book, or I didn't take a trip to Europe because I was busy burning, you know, 40 hours a week on Netflix, well, that was your choice, man. Don't complain. Cherish that time in front of Netflix. The bottom line is to not regret what you're doing or not doing. And if you're going to look around in 10 years and go, oh, yeah, I've watched 150,000 hours in 10 years of Netflix. What else could I have been doing in that time? You know, even just sitting on my porch in a rocking chair watching the world go by. Well, then stop fucking watching Netflix and go do something else. Some people don't know any better. They sit in front of the TV or their computer thinking this is fun. But when you walk away from that day, what are you holding in your hands that you can look at and go, I got this out of that. Okay, you know what, Andrea? I see that smirk. <laughs> and uh, frankly, I'm having grown up on Skinamax. Uh, yeah, I'm really surprised there's not more sex on Netflix. I guess I don't really need it. Are there places to go watch softcore porn anymore? The Internet's for porn. It is. And the beauty part is, I could just stream it straight from my phone to my big screen TV. So, I wish my boss felt that way about Netflix. I mean, they give me a phone with unlimited data. There you go. Yeah, work is work is work. But, oh, you know what? I forgot whatever this entry was. <coughs> what was it? Oh, expressing your feelings. 
Yeah, don't wear your heart on your sleeve. That is not saying that. I'm just saying if you feel something, if you uh, like somebody, you want to be their friend or date them or whatever, just put it out there. Because it is better to have them go, what? No. Ew. I don't want to be your friend. Then not know. And the same thing for... If I saw Chuck in a cigar store, and he's got a cigar in his case that I've never tried that I really like, it doesn't hurt to ask. He can say no. He has that option. Now, if every time you show up, you're asking to smoke other people's cigars and you're never getting back, you're now a jerk. And that's where it's selective. You have to understand, you know, it, it's a give and take. And... But if you don't ask, you'll you'll never know. Um, there's a lot of things. You know, even if you're in a restaurant and your steak is cooked wrong, open your mouth. Tell them, hey, I wanted it this way. You don't have to be a jerk about it. Andrea does that all the time. She's like, no, no, I'll eat it. It'll be fine. I'm like, you're not happy with it. It's okay to send it back. You know, don't be mean about it. It's not the waiter's fault. But don't eat something you don't want. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have HBO, so I don't know. Kennedy says HBO has some softcore. We don't have cable. We can't get cable, really, so... Yeah... You gonna read it? Uh, used to what? His father used to say. Say, oh, that guy has short arms and deep pockets. Got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah, that's somebody who has money who's a cheapskate. You know, he can never reach into his own pocket to get stuff. It's uh. There, there is a give and take. Well, if you got a lot of money, somebody else will reach in your pocket for you. But, you know, also, there's times where you just want your picture taken with whatever it is that's behind you. But you're too nervous to ask somebody to snap a picture. Now, maybe if you're in New York City, don't ask somebody because, yeah, they will run faster than you and you lose your phone or camera. But it doesn't hurt to ask. It doesn't hurt to say, I want this out loud. And possibly get it. Be smart about it, people, though. Be smart. Actually, I think about the channel here. Mm -hmm. I ask folks, hey, subscribe. Click that subscribe button. I want a certain amount of subscribers. It doesn't hurt to ask. I feel awkward asking them to financially support the show, whether it's through a donation, a bottle of gin, subscribing, whatever. But they could uh, say Yeah, they have the option of saying no. And sometimes they are more than happy to do any one of those things. But if I didn't ask, it wouldn't even occur to them. Not because yeah. they're bad, just because... They don't it, think of it. Yeah, there's, well, I wouldn't think of it. I, I'm here having a good time. I'm not thinking about clicking an extra button. I'm thinking about typing in something witty or responding to a question or a comment. So... Mm. Speaking of uh, giving people things, I have to send out that uh, Ziploc full of cigars to the... Uh, I saw that in the downtown. humidor. Yeah, well, I have two of them because I only have a, a few left. So mm -hmm. for this month's Scrotum... Scrotum, sc gotcha. Scoundrel of the month. Scrotum, um, got it. I've already packed up those cigars so I don't smoke them. This way, because the odds are I'm not going to win. So if I don't win, they're already set aside and I haven't smoked them. But if I do win, then I get to unpack them out of the Ziploc. That's that. May the odds be ever in your favor. There we go. What the hell? What? I'm trying to, because, thanks Skype, I have to redo the overlay for the game tonight and I'm trying to crop a thing and... It's being a butt. And tonight there. we will have the full amount of people. 
Yeah, it's gonna be a full crew on the corn nut. <laughs> that sounds like soft core porn. Okay, let's see what else we got here. And Andrew, if you need a break, I'll get up. Give a wave and wander, wander away. I'll just walk away. You'll see. I'll see if you notice. Confidence. Confidence is one of the most attractive things a person can possess. Now, I don't mean swagger and false egotism that makes people look at you. I mean truly understanding what you're worth. And we're all worth more than we know. Physically, this may be as simple as pulling your shoulders back and looking people in the eye. Um, a firm handshake and, a, and voice helps too. That means a firm voice. Speaking to the point, not beating around the bush is another way to show your confidence. Don't hem and haw. That makes fake folks think you don't know what you want or that you're trying to scam something out of them. By the way, Kennedy says, sent the story to Fairy Anthology. Good man. And I will note that I'm often the mu of the mindset about what I have not accomplished or finished rather than what I have done. Well, it's a balance of both. It's don't beat yourself up for what you haven't done because you can still do that. So taking that energy on focusing on actually accomplishing it is good. See, that's another thing. Yes, you have to appreciate your accomplishments as you achieve them. But you can't be that guy, and we've all seen this on TV, perhaps known a few of these guys, who they were the head quarterback or whatever popular person in high school or college, and that's, that's their crowning achievement. They peaked before they got out of school one way or another, and those are their glory days. My glory day is today. And tomorrow... It'll still be the day I'm living right now. This is the day that I I have another chance to accomplish whatever it is I want. Um, but I get it. Uh, there, there are times like, you know, this week I haven't really written anything. I've been busy with other things. And I feel like that's a cheap excuse because I do sit down and watch TV with my son or with Andrew. Because I want to spend time with them. And that has to have a certain amount of priority. Um, I can't just lock myself in this room and work 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 what andrea uh-huh oh, I oh i'm count i'm counting okay. to make okay. sure i have five for the five players that's all okay so yeah but confidence is hugely important and like i said not just oh, but, but look at me i'm better than you i'm just talking about realizing i did help you create your character and i helped andrea and i helped uh richard earlier this week i spent some time with john at jersey's um, we took care of some other stuff yesterday. I helped uh, Steven, who will be on tonight, create his character for Star Wars. I have accomplished things. Um, but, you know, there, there's a give and take. You only have so much time, so much energy to do different things. And um, when I have work, like a day job, well, other things have to be eased back on. What were you going to say, Andrea? Okay. Um, I, I'm just, I'm fine. I'm making faces. I'm okay. working. In that case, I, I will not keep on poking you to see if you had something to say. You just start talking and interrupt me, okay? Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, confidence. It makes all that difference. Don't be too meek. It turns people away. And there's a difference between meek and humble. And it's okay to be shy, but still be confident in what you do. Now, in the first hour, we got through almost a third of the book. So we might make it all the way through. Ah, uh, forgive and forget more. Now, let me explain this one. I forget a lot, usually where I put my keys or my credit cards. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about, though. Which you pointed out. You never know where it is. Yeah, I know. Don't hold on to your anger, discontentment, and emotional pain. That's the point of forgiving and forgetting. It doesn't... It's not the little act of blinding yourself to someone who does bad things to you. That's idiocy. But when you can forgive, it's a release for you. 
You take away the power that person has over you by removing their control over your anger or fear. As for getting, this is the process of moving on, not removing the event from your memory. Don't let one event or act stop you from taking risks in that area ever again. Like with forgiving, though, don't keep making the same mistake again and again or put yourself into the same situation where you can get hurt or taken advantage of. This is about peace of mind and not carrying emotional baggage that stops you from enjoying new things. Not about letting one person repeatedly abuse you. Leave that person or situation in the past and move on. That is forgiving and forgetting. Mm -hmm. It's taking the power away from these things that hurt you or these people that hurt you, the toxic people in your life. You don't have to tell them what you did is okay, but you could tell them, I forgive you, which means I'm removing the power you had over me. I, I'm removing your influence and effect because you are not worth giving that kind of control to over my emotional responses. <laughs> And forgetting is letting go of it. It's not forgetting that it happened. There's a song about it. Let it be. Let it go. Let it flow. <laughs> I like snow. Yo, yo, yo. YOLO. <laughs> hobo. Uh, Murder hobo. Uh, no, no. Um, stand up for yourself. Standing up for yourself can take many forms. But I feel it can be summed up in one simple phrase. Don't let yourself be used by others. As a child, I was smaller than the other kids, and I got picked on for it. Often, it would be a bigger kid shoving me or knocking me down. I'd stand right back up, look him in the eyes. Of course, I usually said something too, and then he knocked me down again. <clears throat> Not saying this was the smartest course of action for me to take, but I did it anyway. Every single time, someone else stepped in and things settled down. In life, it's not always that simple or obvious when you're being taken advantage of. Sometimes it's someone at work or home who asks you to do a task that isn't your responsibility. Doing it once is nice and fine. Or uh, doing it once to be nice is fine, even a good thing. But if you end up doing it every time, then they're taking advantage of you. To stand up for yourself, you don't have to create a confrontation. Sometimes it's as simple as walking away. A um, few comments here. Yeah, the, the bottom line is, Kennedy, with the three games that we have on Andrea's channel, is they're all very different for very specific reasons, because we wanted to do different things. We didn't want to redo the same thing, and they all have a different feel, flavor, and so, yeah. It's going to be fun, and I'm very excited. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I know Crypto Mysteries didn't happen last night, but that's okay. We'll be starting with more people next week. There we go. And then so. we'll bring Aaron in down the road. Mm -hmm. And you know, people who are essentially grief counselors, or grief collectors, grievance collectors. Yeah. Okay, this is totally different than how I read it. First, I thought I saw grievance counselors as in people who help other people get through stuff. Here, you're saying you know people who just collect but hurt. Yeah, I know people like that. And so. this is their identity. They something else I've said in your story you're either the hero or the victim choose wisely and those kind of people are choosing to be a victim all their life because they feel it gets them the attention they want that's not really the kind of attention I want it's not healthy it, I like attention but not like that it's like a self-induced cancer and you know, if you have a moment where something happens, you get mugged, you go through a breakup, you dated the wrong person, and you're hurt, sure, you are allowed to have your moment of, I'm butt hurt. You're allowed. But to continue with it and carry it like a flag? You're oh my god, don't carry your butt like a flag. That's how you get pink eye. <sighs> Do you want pink eye? That's how you get pink eye. Sorry. True story. I just... Uh. Yeah, don't... Don't collect... Being offended. And, and now with social media, we see there are a lot of people like that. Yeah, I don't... They live to be offended. They live to be... Um... What's the word I'm looking for, Andrea? Butthurt? 
butt hurt is the one I was going to use again, but I've used it so many times. There's a better word. I'll use. Ass hurt. Yeah, I think that was it. That was probably it. Yeah, um, that sounds good. I Google synonyms for butt hurt. I'm going to see if they do. Yeah, I'm going to see what it is. Uh, your hands after. Yeah, don't, don't be a victim. Don't be a, a drama person who constantly is screaming how you were offended and this person, you know, even if they are purposely <laughs> being an asshole and trying to hurt you. I put cinnamon, synonyms at thesource.com, but heard in there like, did you mean butt out? More suggestions, butter. <laughs> now with butter. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck says, Google cinnamon for butt hurt? Weird, isn't it? This is what I live with. It's kind of awesome. <laughs> um, you know, I watched a short video the other day <laughs> where the woman was talking about, um, no, it just makes the anus burn more. <laughs> don't, don't get it in your eyes either. Um, and they were talking about, uh, does... PC shut down the conversation and they were defending it saying no it doesn't it opens up more conversation but I think they were missing the point that's going on being PC again I'd say go with politely cor uh, consider it instead of politically correct I don't um, want to be political no I want to be politely considerate and that can open up conversations but being politically correct people have turned this into a club as in a bludgeoning tool to shut people down and it's not helping the conversation and they're like oh because of being pc we've added these words to the dictionary and they're like social justice warriors transphobia blah 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 and i'm like cinnamon for butt hurt <laughs> tm nice kennedy watch the swimwear episode saw the crap <laughs> Oh, the that's... whole thing was to crack apart the Kraken as a running joke through the whole thing. Oh, yeah. All the way to the end. It started here on Talk at the Tavern. <laughs> Which, you know, when we get the, um, we've got to hit the subscriber goals. And then when we get 25 subscribers, uh, pajama party. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. Fun. Fun stuff. Enjoy life. Okay. Let's see what we got next year. <clears throat> Covered standing up for yourself. Face your fears. Facing your fears can be one of the most difficult things you ever do. It can take the form of sitting in a dark room. Asking somebody to have coffee with you or just pushing through your anxiety to do a task that should be simple. Daily event like returning something at the store, which is an issue I have, by the way. Don't jump off a building to get over your fear of heights, but do use a step stool to get something off the top shelf. The reason it's important to face your fears is not to banish that fear, but to show yourself that you can do it. When you want to, you can overcome anything to get something you want. This is a healthy thing. Yes, Andrea? I said, you can do it. You can. Well, facing your fears, like I said, first of all, recognizing that you have a fear of something is the first step. <clears throat> and then, because you don't want to build something up so much in your head when you need to do it, you're unable to. So, taking the baby steps into <sighs> facing your fears, because you don't want to be at the end of your life. And realize there's things you didn't do. Andrea, for example, your fear of water. Mm -hmm. You got on a plane. You're like, put me by the damn window so I can see where I'm going to die in this huge mass of water we're going over. But I did it. You faced your fear. And you reaped the rewards. Yeah, I got to go to the Harry Potter store. And see Kevin. Yeah. On an island. After taking a boat across. Snake. Kennedy says there was an article in one of the oh. online outlets and someone was one of these brutal attack dog types who convicted people in public just based on accusations and then found themselves accused. They went back and realized just how bad they were. 
Yeah, that's called backpedaling. Because they like, oh, right. I did this shit. Yeah. Um. You know, there might be times where a lynch mob is a good thing, where the person just can't get the justice they deserve in a court of law. No, but in general, mobs are a bad idea. They don't... Unless it's a flash mob. Yeah, flash mob. Those are cool. Yeah. Are people dressed as flash. Yeah, well, how do you see them if they're flash? <sighs> I am just relaxing. <clears throat> I need a nap. I think right now is a great time for a nap. That would... That's on my bucket list. Here's one for you, Andrea. Uh, yes. Don't pursue what runs away. Now, I'm a huge proponent for pursuing your dreams and often say you can't fail unless you give up. But some things run away from you. You'll never pet a cat if you chase it. It has to come to you or at least meet you halfway. <laughs> this, often apply this advice most often applies to matters of the heart. If you make your interest known and that person doesn't meet you halfway, don't pursue them. They'll only run faster. And if they appear to be interested, but retreat every time you come closer to them, not necessarily physically, then they're probably playing games with you for their own ego's sake. Or they don't know how to express that they aren't interested and don't want to hurt you. Don't pursue that. Move on. Find something that's healthier. <laughs> I'm still thinking flash mob. A oh, mob flashes. Trust flash mobs by me always stay closed. It's all sabotaging. And uh. Oh. Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> it's and by the way, I recently heard of <clears throat> Andrea. Who was it recently? I think it was you reading me the article about the person who basically went. Don't pursue your dreams. Oh, James Gunn. That's James Gunn. Would you like me to read it? Yeah, yeah. You have it on hand? Give me a second. I, I saved it. So hold okay. on one second. Now, this Talks is, when I say pursuing your dreams, I mean working towards your passions and your goals. And All right. Whatnot. Hold on. Because this, I, I saved it because this is great. Um, okay. This was a post by James Gunn, July 14th. James Gunn, by the way, is the director of Guardians of the Galaxy and quite a few other good movies, and I really like what he does and how he interacts with the public. And I like this. This post, uh, I think it's great. Those of you who have, followed, who have followed me here for a while know I sometimes rail against the advice, follow your dreams. It's a small-minded platitude to make people feel good, but there are better ways to find it better ways of finding a career. Instead, I have advised a hardcore period of discovery. For many people, this is the college years, where people do research on themselves, on the world around them, and how they interact with that world. And, instead of just following your dreams, you find a balance of what you're good at, what you love doing, and how you can best service others and the world. And yes, you can serve the world by managing restaurants or doing contracting work. Or playing fiddle in an alt country ensemble. One of the additional values of this process is learning about things that might be dreams that you didn't know existed or weren't on your radar in the first place. This, to me, is a much more holistic and realistic way of developing ourselves as people, our careers, and striving for success. Now, there's some research to back up what I've been saying. Following your dreams isn't just bad advice because it's narrow-minded. It's bad advice because it treats our dreams and passions as fixed objects when, in fact, dreams and passions can be developed and discovered over time. Although people often accuse me of being negative when I put down the saying, follow your dreams, I believe it's, I believe it's because that dumb platitude doesn't allow for how big, magical, and full of undiscovered wonders we and life actually are. Yeah. <clears throat> Basically, I really like that. If you're following a dream, you put on blinders to other things. Um, and also, a lot of times, you go in unprepared, thinking, oh, if I follow my dreams, I succeed. There's a learning curve. 
to bringing your dreams from a dream to reality. And there's a yeah. lot of fucking work between point A and point C. B is a very long road. See, I would like to talk to James Gunn about this and ask him what his dream initially was. Was it to be a director or was it something else and this is just what he found a passion for and now that's his career? You know, I would. I have so many questions. Yeah. I think it's very reasonable. It's uh, um, you know, with myself, the gaming is a way of following my dream for writing. It's actually the storytelling that I love. And originally, by the way, on my business cards, I put Travis Sivart, storyteller. And people are like, oh, great! Do you come to nursing homes and tell stories like the old-fashioned storytellers from the 1300s? I'm like, no, I I write books. They're stories. People don't get it. And they're in a format that makes it feel like you're listening to a story as opposed to. Mm -hmm. like, so could you do this? I'm like, well, I could. But twenty bucks is twenty bucks. You know, pretty much what it boils down to is, no, this this message came across wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I I did not express it well. But with the writing thing. I just like creating worlds and situations and finding the rough situations. You saw me as a storyteller watching the superheroes game, exactly. And the beauty part is, any of those games, they're a group storytelling thing. So everybody, and I purposely set these games up with it in mind that I want Andrea to help. Are you raising your hand? Oh, you're focusing. There you go. That's better. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, I want Andre to be able to, tonight, during our space adventures, uh, tell me what happens when she rolls the dice and it comes out as, oh, she failed in what she was doing, but she has advantage or disadvantage according to the dice. Yeah, I could tell her what happens, but if she has a clever idea, then I want her to put in her two cents and help. Instead of the corn up going in the person's hand, it went up their nose, knocking them over and mission accomplished. Would you to like deliver it via slingshot? <laughs> I don't know. Um, a messed up robot, who knows. So you know, it's it's yeah. It, it's fun to tell a story for me and and does that mean I need to write books? <laughs> Not necessarily. There's other ways to do this. So I Gaming. never dreamt my dream was never to be a writer. A write being a writer is just a way to tell my stories. It's one outlet, one way to do what my passion is. Uh, just like gaming is another way. This show is another way of being a storyteller. Right now, we're telling a story. And you guys are interacting. You're part of the story. It's chilly. I don't know why I'm cold. <laughs> it's a... Uh... Because the temperature is not warm enough. That's all I got for you. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Logic wins. Moving on. <laughs> Live oh. in the moment. Guys, this this really, really is important here. This is so important. We all have a past, and it's good to reminisce and learn from our previous successes and failures. We all have a future, and it's good to plan and hope for what is coming. But you can't live in the past or future. That's self-destructive. Living in the moment is a great way to relieve stress. Most stress comes from regretting the past or fearing the future. By realizing what's going on right now, right this second, you can enjoy life. It's... So... I can sit here and worry about the game tonight and am I prepared and will everybody behave right and will everything go smooth. But it does no good. Or I can sit here and worry about missing last night's game because things happened. But again, that does no good. Yes, I'm going to remember if somebody is a uncooperative player. I'm not going to forget that. And I'm going to plan accordingly. But I'm not going to live in that moment and dwell on it. I'm going to do what I'm doing right now. And tonight, when we're running the game... I'll worry about that then, and I'll live that moment then. Right now, I'm living this with you guys. 
And hello to to the folks who popped in to see what we're doing. We're actually going over how to not have regrets at the end of your life. Be aware of your surroundings is the next point. The reason this is is important in advice is twofold. One, being aware of your surroundings allow you to avoid dangers. It's going to be tripping over the bump in the sidewalk or avoiding a shady looking character looking for trouble. I'm looking at you, Kennedy. Or Chuck. Really, all of you. You're shady. Um, two, it allows you to enjoy what's around you, whether it's birds singing a pretty cloud, a funny sign, or anything else that may bring a moment's joy. It's the little things in life that make up the big things. <clears throat> so, there are times and places to pick up your phone and bury yourself in your phone. It's not when you're out in public. That's the time to be aware of what's around you, so you can enjoy it or avoid something that is potentially harmful to you. Like I said, which could be simple as tripping over something on the in front of you. Um, yeah, be aware of your surroundings. And that also means people. You okay, Andrea? I'm being aware of her right now. I just feel like something smashed my head. I'll oh. bear it. Is Alderaan exploding? Uh, maybe. It's just... Do you need a tinfoil hat? No, I might need some ibuprofen because I think the pressure from outside is... It could be. Well, if it's suddenly chilly, there, there could be a barometric, a barometric drop. And yeah. It's science. It is. But yeah, be aware of your surroundings. Um, <clears throat> this also could extend to how you set up your surroundings especially your home or your, your place of peace. Um, and they could be something as simple as arranging your furniture so it's conducive to conversation or watching TV if that's what you do in that room. Um, in the bedroom, it might be making sure there's not a bunch of distracting things on the wall because your bedroom ultimately is a place for you to go, relax, sleep, forget the rest of the world, um, as well as the people around you. You have surrounded yourself with these people for a reason. Being aware of them, what they're going through. You know, the barometric pressure drop and the headache that's starting on the person that you care for. Yeah, it makes a difference. Being oblivious is rarely productive. Okay. Learn to listen. Learning when to stop talking and listen instead is an invaluable skill that will serve you well your whole life. This isn't tuning out while daydreaming so the other person can ramble on about crap you don't care about. This is active listening, which means mentally going through the information as it's given to you. This can be used in school, at work, or even with a friend. It allows you to glean more information, ask leading questions, to dig deeper, and most importantly, help someone by actually listening to what they're saying and their meaning. So many people never have a conversation. Instead, they catch one tidbit of information and then mentally loop the response they want to give and aren't listening at all. They're just waiting for their chance to spout more crap. Most people who talk want to be heard. That's all they want. They want to know you heard what they're saying. Their fears, dreams, silly jokes, crazy ideas, extreme opinions, and whatever else they spout out. Active listening deepens the bond between two people and gives so much to the speaker as well as the listener. This is important. You know, I'm, I keep referring back to the gaming because that's what we're doing nowadays. And this is ultimately important. Um, Kennedy, I'll address that in one second, buddy. But in the game, just waiting for your turn to react or do something in the game or in life, it stops you from appreciating the other things around you, what the other characters are doing, or the information I'm giving you as the game master that's important to what you're about to do in your action. And the same thing in a conversation. Um, Kennedy, as for having no relaxing place that's yours, I'm working on it, it can be... As simple as where you have your computer. Maybe face your computer towards a window where you can stare out. Or a blank wall. 
or a wall with a half dozen pictures you like. This is why when people work in a cubicle, they bring pictures of things they like because they need to personalize that space and make it relaxing for them. It doesn't have to be a big space. Just some place where you can relax. Which, by the way, for some people, it's going to the beach or riding the train and people watching. Um, I have a lot of people I know who go to malls and just sit on a bench, watch a crowd go by. For some people, it's window shopping. Um, I often use my living room as an escape. I have a favorite seat in the living room, and I build pillows fishing. That's good. I build pillows around me, so I'm in like a little nest. Get a little blanket for my legs. The cats get on me. I turn on the TV. I have my drink next to me, my notepad to write down ideas. And I turn on, usually a movie. A series, not so much for some reason. A series of movies, usually, I've noticed. Right, right. Especially if I have a length of time. But like a Netflix series, there's always something more. There's always something more. There's not an ending point where I can go, ah, got it. Um, other times... It's just a good meal. Mm. Cooking the right mm. meal, knowing you're going to sit down and take your time. Chuck I, says, I hitchhike and try to find randoms that will kidnap me so I can escape. We have, There's another guy on Twitch who is hitchhiking through all 50 states, including hitchhiking on an airplane to get to Hawaii. He's already hitchhiked on airplanes, and he's at day 97, 98, I don't, almost 100. It's great. And yeah, he is hitchhiking across, minus the five states where it's illegal to hitchhike. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, creating your little, your, your safe space, if you will. But your escape space, I think, is a better way of putting it. You know, where you can just escape the world around you for a little bit. Um, now, in regards to this with the listening, it, it is ultimately important. Some people are alpha talkers. Rarely does somebody who talk a lot listen very much. Um, and this is something that I've faced with me because I could talk. And it sometimes takes a conscious effort for me to remember. I didn't notice. Was that a cat? That was. I'm being aware of my surroundings right now. What was that? Uh, it was a cat. Oh, I don't want to be aware of surroundings right now. Chuck says I put the lotion on the skin. <laughs> yeah, well, that's awkward in public when you're doing it to strangers, Chuck. <laughs> you gotta if be it's a... not video, it didn't happen. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Fat boy rule. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, how would that be a fat boy test? You like just randomly lotion people. That's arrestable. Um... Yeah. It's also important for you to listen to what they're saying as you're putting a lotion on, which usually is, why the hell are you touching me? Stop it and go away. It's important. <laughs> oh, that's great. I... <sighs> so, the next thing in 27 Thoughts on Having No Regrets in Life, stay clean and dressed neatly. When I was... Hmm? I don't always dress neatly. Well, there's a difference between dressing fancy and dressing neatly. So mm -hmm. when I was 16 and living on my own with a 27-year-old roommate in New York, <clears throat> he said something that stuck with me. Always look your best, even if you're covered in paint or wearing work clothes. See, we did painting, tile working, wallpaper, and other such tasks. And I'd watch this man... Even when a mess from working, step up to another person and have an air of confidence that made the other person notice him. I know I already covered confidence, but this is an extension of that. Dress neatly. Let's start with that. This means don't look like crap. How do I explain this in one page? Look your best within the circumstances you are in. Tuck in your shirt, stand up straight, wear clean clothes, or whatever you can to show folks that you know what you're doing. Never be the slob. Slovenly behavior or appearance gives the impression that you don't care about yourself. If you don't care about yourself, why should anyone else? Mm. Even in torn jeans, rebellious phase, you can still be clean and neat. This may sound like it's at odds with one another, but it isn't. <clears throat> a 
when I go out to work in the yard, I start with clean clothes. If I have clothes with holes in them, then I just want to make sure that it's done right, if you will. It's not raggedy. It's not, you know, like that t-shirt. You can wear a t-shirt and you don't necessarily look fancy, but if you got that collar that's all stretched out and hanging down, yeah. and you got that one little slice in the sleeve right here, so it's kind of just raggedy. The difference between that and just a different t-shirt is a world of difference. Um, brushing your hair, even if you're going to be outside work in the yard, is, I don't know, be the best you can be in the Army. Even if you're going to work at McDonald's and you got to wear that uniform. <clears throat> there are people at McDonald's I look at and go, oh, they give a damn about what they look like, who they are. And I see other people who I'm like, oh, they, they just threw this stuff on. They don't care what they look like. And, and it forms how people react to you and interact with you. It makes a difference. It really does. Yeah. Okay. Learn to speak. <clears throat> Excuse me. <sighs> this is so important. I cannot express this vague and confusing. What the hell do you mean concept enough? So let's see if I can explain it so you get it. When I was 14 years old, a young lady and I were walking down the street. I was complimenting her. She said, your voice is like, I don't. Or I, I said to her, <clears throat> your voice is like, I don't know, I can't describe it. And she replied, yes, you can, Travis. You can describe anything. And I realized she was right. So to close the story, I said her voice sounded like a pink fluffy cloud. The point is that knowing how to express yourself verbally is invaluable. You don't have to be elegant or poetic, just able to do it. How do you accomplish this? I'll give you a few ideas. Slow down. Collect your thoughts. Organize them. And then lay them out in front of the other person in a very clear manner. Keep it simple. Don't go into details too much. Others will grow bored and begin picking it apart. Just entertain themselves. Let them create the details that work for them. The point is to get your meaning across, not make a long dissertation to make them be in awe of you. And realize when somebody isn't listening. When you feel you must repeat yourself, when they don't follow your whole thought but argue one point you made in the beginning, or a bazillion other things, stop talking. They aren't listening. You made your point. Let it rest. Verbal communication is really the core of human interaction. And if you can't speak well, it's not going to work well for you. Um, I'm being very distracted right now. As I'm, what is it? What is what? What's distracting? Uh, I, I just wanted, I had a message. I want to make sure it wasn't important. Was it? It doesn't seem to be. It's, uh, I do have something from Steam Labs talking about my uh, stats from my last stream, and I'm like, what last stream? What are they talking about? Who knows? It's, uh, They've basically give, given me for the first hour 37 that we're on. Are we still streaming? Can you guys still hear us and see us? Because um, I'm not seeing any motion on Twitch, etc. So I need to know. I'm going to check a few things here. Chuck, Kennedy, John, anybody listening? You... You, John, and anybody. Is listening. anybody out there? Okay. You, you, just checking, making sure it. So they still. Mhm. Mm okay. Okay, Chuck says he still got us. Okay, just making sure because when it sends me that, usually it means the stream cut off. So, give me a second. I will get Andrea's picture back up there instead of this other thing. Okay. There. Oh, is my picture gone? Well, I I had to check the thing behind you. Thank you guys. Appreciate uh, that. Want to make sure we didn't lose our stream and. When you lose your stream, you make a mess all over the bathroom. 
Ew. Yeah, being able to communicate effectively, and like I said, it doesn't have to be elegantly, it doesn't have to be complicated, you don't have to impress anyone, uh, get your point across. I have friends who won't stop talking, they just keep talking, they don't make room for other people to communicate back, they uh, don't cross your streams. Ah. I did that. I, I had a brother that was 16 months older than me. So, yeah, when we were seven years old, we would cross our streams. It was a thing boys would do. Oh, my goodness. Silly. I don't know they do it anymore. Oh, my God. Let it boys, boy, do you? Know? I'm sure Chuck does. I'm sure Chuck is, like, in the men's room full of strangers going, Hey, ha, 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 as he sidesteps to their urinal. That's the bucket list. Sword fight. Sword fight. Because that's what we used to call it. Sword fighting with urine. You are killing me. Yeah. You gotta watch out for the splashback. Oh. Oh my god. John, I'm so sorry, man. John says, they do. Look at the store's bathroom. <laughs> Chuck says, I'd be no one to cross with. Oh my goodness. Yeah, sometimes less is more. If you express an idea clearly and simplistically and then stop talking people are more likely to listen than if you go on for 10 minutes about the topic what i say that as i'm running a talk show <laughs> I'm talking. are you gonna stop talking what 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 I just uh, stare at the screen away for people to type things in <sighs> Th then chuck corrects himself with have oh you have no one to cross with i was like I'd be no one to cross have? What the fuck? I don't know what that means. But no, I have no one to cross with. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not offering. Okay. You can rub the lotion on the skin while you cross streams. <laughs> <laughs> Which skin? The foreskin? The next one is uh, be prepared. <laughs> Got a I was not prepared for that. Oh, well, be prepared. Do you have a handkerchief? Guys, do you guys carry a handkerchief? No? Why not? They're small, compact, out of a bunch of uses. They could be used to clean a windshield, mop up a spill, bind a wound, blow your nose when you can't find a tissue or napkin. But the most common use is to give it, not lend, but give to a woman who's crying, which I have done this multiple times. Being prepared is a wide and very yeah, deep Yeah, he blow his nose and give it to someone crying. <laughs> They're crying because I just blew my nose in it. I can't have a hanky. <laughs> Hold this. <laughs> so being prepared is a wide and varied piece of advice, which I would clarify with. You cannot be prepared for every eventuality. But you can carry a few things that allow you to be ready for many different things, and this goes for men or women, even the hanky thing. In the physical side of things, carry a pocket knife, loose change, small screwdriver, lighter, or anything else you think may have some use for more than four times a year. Hmm. Okay, don't go crazy, but it's easy enough to have a pen and paper ready as opposed to other things. Have a jack in your car. Have a cell phone that allows you to have a calculator. Jack, why is he in the car? It's awfully hot. Did you crack a window? Uh, a cell phone that allows you to have a calculator, compass, etc. Multi-tools are cheap and portable. You can never be prepared for everything, but you can have a general readiness. And I think Chuck will appreciate this because I believe he carries a pocket knife and I can imagine he carries a multi-tool or something along those lines. Um, we don't have to carry a flashlight anymore. Those are on our phone. Our phone is this amazing multi-tool. So you drop it and break it. Yeah, yeah. I dropped my phone so many times last night it actually cracks. It's true. She's cracked. Not me, my phone. You crack is whack. Kennedy says, when I had a pipe, a pipe tool is somehow useful for many things. It is. It's almost like a mini screwdriver. Um, you can use it for a bunch of different things. It's uh, And there's times I, I have carried a lighter with me everywhere I go, even though I don't smoke cigarettes, and I'm not going to stop to smoke a pipe or a cigar when I'm out. I don't bring them with me unless if I know there's a time and place for it. But it's handy to have a lighter, whether it's to burn that little loose string hang that thread hanging off your clothes or uh setting fire to that person that just won't shut up mm. nope 
No. Uh, what? Oh, I didn't know that was a no. That's a no. If you set them on fire, they really won't shut up. <laughs> They'll just get louder. That's true. That's very true. Good point. Hold on, I'm adjusting my screen so I can see how many people are watching at any given moment. Okay. Hi, people. Are, are they all gone? No, they're there. they're still there. We there's like two. No, no, we got at least three. Here's no, Kennedy, there's more than that. Kennedy and Chuck and John. Hey, here's a good piece of advice: no three clean jokes. This is something I used to phrase as no three jokes you could tell your grandmother. But today's grandmother aren't the same as the saintly, silver-haired, innocent little old ladies we used to think of <laughs> in my childhood. In this day and age, they may also be silver hair tattoo, raise a shot and drink to your health, tell you to go screw yourself, woman, that's a modern strong lady. Yes. So I advise that you know three clean jokes that you can tell to strangers that may be kindergartners, church-going believers, or whatever. Why should you do this? Because humor is universal and creating a bond with laughter is invaluable. Now go learn about a horse that walked into a bar and the bartender said, why the long face? Mm. I understand, Chuck. You can just listen. You don't have to respond, buddy. We appreciate you just hanging out and listening. We'll harass you anyway. It's all right. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to say shit to you whether you can type to us or not. Um, but yeah, humor is always good. Uh, there's nothing like a horrible knock-knock joke to make people moan and groan and realize that you have a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. you know and I have <laughs> here we go watch hold on while I pimp my shit I wrote a whole book 201 of the worst dad jokes you're welcome and they're all clean jokes um yeah they're they're special what's Beethoven's favorite fruit mm. uh banana nana what's long brown and sticky Oh my god! A stick. <laughs> what happened to the cow that jumped over the barbed wire fence? Utter destruction. Oh, that's so sad. Here's a great one. I guess I'm going to read a fourth one. Two goldfish were in a tank. One asked the others, Do you know how to drive this thing? Ah! <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's <there's, there's, laughs> Is that a great one? <laughs> oh. Okay, let me put these back on. Go to the next thing. Understand. Hmm. That's great. Thank you. Skip Understand you your goals, large and small. Oh, where do I start on this? Okay, so I mentioned this in a couple <laughs> other places. <laughs> let me break it down, though. Goals are not one huge thing. They're many small things. Quick example: You want to skydive and parachute. There's more than one step, such as save money, research a place, set up an appointment, do the pre-jump stuff, do the jump, post to social media, etc. I'm not doing that. What I just showed you is a large goal broken it up into many smaller goals. A large goal can become overwhelming and intimidating, like writing a book. But if you break it into manageable bites, it's easier to digest oh. and accomplish. My point is don't let a large goal become too much for you. Break it into smaller goals, which makes you feel like you've succeeded in each step and encourages you to complete and pull cord. That is an important step in it. Uh, but break it into smaller goals that make makes you feel like you've succeeded in each step. Encourages you to complete the larger achievement. Don't mind me. I'm going to stand up. My, my legs are falling asleep. Okay. There we go. <laughs> No, you could do that. That's good. No, I don't want to do that. I liked it when you did that. Yeah, of course. I need oh. that boot chair in here. One goal I want to do is Andrea. <laughs> but that's a lot of smaller steps. Um, what? What? Uh, hmm. it's, yeah, I think everybody gets this one. I, I, I'd like to think they are. But, you know, if we take the writing a book example i've had a lot of people come to me oh i want to be on your show i'm a writer i'm like that's great what have you written they're like well i haven't finished anything yet i'm like well then you're definitely a writer but you're not quite an author yet or i want to be on your show cool 
when? And then another. Yeah, you, you got to set a date. Um, but with writing a book, it starts out by writing. And it's the first word, then the first sentence, then the first paragraph, the first page, the first chapter. And you can't look at it as one, I'm going to sit down and write a book. you got to look down. I'm, I'm going to sit down and write. <clears throat> then eventually, you suddenly look back and you're like, I've got a book. Mm -hmm. But even with that, once you've written out a whole book, you need to edit it, clean up that rough draft, format it, publish it. Get a cover it. or artwork and get it out to people. I want to be on your show Christmas Eve 2085, so we're looking at 67 years from now. Well, let's see if Skype has another update and fucks everything up. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay. It'll come out in uh, January 2nd, 2085. Skype will fuck shit up again, and we'll be like, ah, sorry, Kennedy. When did the next date you're open? And I imagine we'll all be talking about, ah, Okay. Clean as you go. This might sound like something weird for not having regrets in your life, but let me explain. Really, follow this rule in everything you do. I'll compare it. To your home, apartment, even your car. Don't let things pile up. They become a mess. If you put things in the trash, take it out before it's full, then you never have trash everywhere. If you organize things, dirty clothes, mail, dirty dishes, whatever, and take care of them on a regular basis, okay, I mean daily, then they never can overwhelm you. Spending five minutes to clean your dishes is even 30 minutes with the overflowing sink. Taking in one fast food bag full of trash from the day's travel is easier than digging through a pile of trash in your car floorboard that comes up to your knees. Now this goes for all kinds of things, not just in your home and car. The rule applies to emotional and mental issues also. Don't let them build up to overwhelming proportions. But only you can take care of it before it becomes a tidal wave that makes you want to run for a hiding place. And this can go for bills... This can go for getting a job. This can go for writing a book. This can go for anything. You have to schedule the time to do these things. And if you do it when it's small, it never gets overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Okay, avoid extremes and excess. We could talk about this politically. In later. excess? No, not in excess. And excess. Oh, and that's all a big thing. Avoid extremes and excess. Mm -hmm. I've had too many friends ruin their lives to drugs, food, video games, or obsessive behavior over their love interest because of extremes and excess. Don't do it. Realize a healthy life is balance. There is not all or nothing, black or white, right or wrong. Everything is made up of layers and spectrums and not just two things. I can't make this simpler than I have. If you don't get it, what you just read, then enjoy the recovery from your chosen addiction. We've all had that friend. Every time they get in a relationship, they disappear from everybody else's lives. Mm. They don't necessarily call a friend and go, I'm not your friend anymore. They just disappear. They stop responding to you, your messages. They don't go out with you. They don't call you, whatever. And, and I've known people who do this with video games, too. They get a new video game, and suddenly they're off the grid. For weeks. This I'm is, not that committed to a video game. It's, I enjoy variety too much to bored. enjoy this. And that isn't to say, you know, you can't have a point in time where you're just busy oh. with something. You know, Sorry. whether that's a partner, a game, work, uh, writing a book, whatever. How... What's the matter? How do you... How does one... Go about donating to the Gym Punk Week. Because I see the bar on the screen, but I don't see how to do that. Um, hold on a second. Let me come over here. I know there's a URL, and I think it's the one that's in the donate down below. But give me a so second. You're, so one would have to go under the video and click that donate button? Correct. Got I it. believe so. I'm going to double check that real quick. Hold on one moment. Making sure I set it up right because yesterday we did have a lot going on. Um, uh, 
Oh no, that's the donation ticker, which since we don't have donations, I don't bother with a ticker. Um, well, if you, under the video, the donate, I clicked there. on it and it went to a thing. Is that correct? Probably. Um, under the video, just hit donate. Yeah. I think so. And when that is done, will it automatically show up on that bar? I... Or do you have to go in and manually do it? I believe so. Give me just a second. Let me check here. Because we didn't talk about that yesterday. You know, when I... when I No, I totally didn't mention it at all. Uh, when I set it up... Um, if you stream OBS... Widget URL for more. Donation settings. There we go. Okay. Um... Yeah, basically when you donate, it's going to go to, uh, like, PayPal or whatever. Um, I'm just making sure. That's all. I didn't know how it worked. We didn't talk about that yesterday during the tweak in the Twitch. Here, actually, I, I don't know if that's where it leads. That says... That's where it leads. That's the donation page. That should be the one linked to. Um, yeah, I guess if I want to do this. Hold on, let me change this. Because I think that donate thing leads to something else. Okay. Here. I've done it. Now that's all linked. There we go. So now if you do it, it will actually adjust that bar. Okay. Okay. It's all set up. So yeah, if you click the donate, it takes it too. So did it not fix the bar? Oh, the bar. Well, I, did you donate? Perhaps. We'll see if it changed. It's, it might have just gone straight to PayPal, because that link was going to PayPal before. So. Really? Um, yeah, because I forgot to uh, sync it up with the other thing there. Well, that's fun. So there's... There's that. It's, uh... So, okay. Well, I didn't do it. I was trying to put something on the bar to see how it worked, and now there. Well, you could do it again if you want. The other one did go to PayPal. Yeah, I can't do that. Which, uh, the funny thing is, I, I hate this. I, I just... Um... Yeah, out of the dollar you put in, 67 cents came through. Yeah, that's why, I, you know, I walk in the other room and hand you a dollar. I'm yeah. not doing that again. <laughs> they kept 33%. Mm. And I don't know how much of you do it through Streamlabs. I think it ends up being the same thing. Uh, that's why I like, I, I don't, yeah. Anyhow. Okay. Let's go back to this. Succeed and fail with grace. Hmm. Now, we've all heard of poor losers, but there are poor winners, too. I guarantee you, you will succeed in some things and fail in others. This may be as simplistic as a game or discussion, or as complex as career or love relationship. Chuck, it absolutely is. Um, this is why I, I, I would love to figure out a way to tell people when they want to donate, go to PayPal and send it as friends and family so I get the full amount. But these other services that link up, they take a huge chunk out of it. That's um, crazy. Yeah, when they're taking 33%, that's bullshit. Well, that's how they make their money, which I understand, but come on, people. That, that's a lot for one click. It is. Um, so this may be as simplistic as a game or discussion or as complex as a career or love relationship. Learn to succeed and fail without creating drama around what you've done. Some folk need, feel the need to draw attention to themselves and let folks know how urgent, important, or paramount their peak or valley in life has been. Don't be that person. Your friends will celebrate or commiserate these events as appropriate, but if you think the world needs to know or care, you've crossed a line that'll make you more of a tabloid headline than an emotionally excited or interesting individual. Personal success or failure is meant to be supported by your inner circle, not the whole world. 
The sooner you learn that, the better your support structure will be. By the way, ringing that bell too often is akin to the boy that cried wolf. Don't do it just because you have the urge to get a little attention. Yeah. No matter the cost. Uh, yeah, we've all bucks is bucks. known this person. And if you don't know this person, go to whatever you social media you're person. on. And you might be that person. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, go to your social media and scroll. You'll find one of those people. Um, which, you know, and, and this is a fine line. But we've all had that person, whether they have a new car, a kid, a pet, or a job, and they're always posting about that one thing. Basically going, look at me, look at me, look at me for this one thing. And we get tired of it. You know, you see it one time, you're like, all right, way to go. The 8th, 10th, 12th, 50th time you see it, you're like, oh, shut up already. Nobody cares. Well, they did care the first time. Maybe even the fifth time. Skipper! Hey, Skipper! Hey, buddy. Good to see you. How you feeling? Awesome postcard. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know if you were paying attention last time uh, when I held that up, but I got that in the mail. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Love that one. I'd be the guy that purposely asks for an eye. <laughs> you should go on there and just wear an eye patch. Arr. We're two eye patches. <laughs> I keep going like this to see the puzzle. <laughs> Wear your glasses and I can't hear you. Glad to s see here. You're doing better. Yeah, man. It's uh, glad to s glad to know you're doing better. Anyway, it goes, man. It's a. Uh... Oh, and also yeah, sure. thank you for the headsets. I don't know if you've been on since I mentioned that last time, but thank you for the headsets and the earbuds and the other thing, other things. I've put them over there, so now they're there and they're available. Chris Fire use. Pit. Oh yeah, the the the, the color changing things, right? It's been raining and we had to leave last night, so we haven't been able to use it. Well, that and <laughs> my yard is a mess with a fallen tree. It got cut up. Thank you to Tara's husband, David. Um, but yeah, I haven't gone and cleaned up that area of my yard. The rest of the yard looks great, but that area. So yes, they will be used. Anybody want some wood? <laughs> Just another nerve block next week, so life will get much better. Then, man, that's rough. But it'll get better. And by the way, in reference to what I just read about uh, succeed with uh, failure and grace, not calling attention to yourself. I will point out Jamin right here that's typing right now is doing it right. He didn't come in here and start bitching and moaning about what's going on in his life. We asked, he told. That's mm -hmm. that. That's the right way to do it. This is the way you get attention from your inner circle, from your support group. Not blast it all over the place. And by the way, Skipper, if you blasted it on Facebook, I get it because we don't see that a lot from you. We see the silly puns and the jokes, so. It's hmm. acceptable, like I said, to do it on occasion. Just not every day, demanding attention for your successes or failures. Okay, we're almost done with all this. We'll finish it this, this show. I'm just... My voice puts you to sleep, I know. I, I know, and it's... I wanted to be on here, but I want to go to sleep because he'll read when I can't sleep and I'm out. This is... So, use manners and common courtesy. By the way, we're talking about having no regrets in life. Things you could do throughout your whole life, so at the end of your life you don't look back and go, oh, if only. Please, thank you, yes sir, no ma'am, holding the door for a stranger, etc. goes further than you may ever know. For the most part, this is a seamless, invisible habit, a thankless task. But in the long run, those most often around you will form an opinion about your grace and personal character. More, more importantly is the effect it has on you as an individual and your own self-worth. Don't hesitate to be courteous for your own sake. I, I gave this very advice to somebody else last night. Um, I just want to say I held the door just because it's what I do and I got yelled at. Mm -hmm. I'm not decrepit. I'm not that old. I can hold the door. Okay. Well, apparently your personality is broken. Don't hesitate to be courteous 
for your own sake. If that doesn't make sense, then let me put it this way. This is a silent investment in your own character and self-worth. Be the person who finds small pleasure in helping others in inconsequential ways. Because it actually makes a huge difference in your unconscious view of yourself. It boils down to be nice. That's what it really boils down to. Damon. Jamin says, I had to explain to people that while I was still in my disability fight, it was important to post all doctor appointments because they look at social media. No, it's one thing to post social, uh, doctor's appointments, but it's another thing to just bitch about what's going on. I'm so broken. Woe is me. I'm so broken. Woe is me. Or I'm so great. Yay me. I'm so great. Yay me. But that way, you know, if you forget your appointment other people on your social media will be like, hey, did you go? You have that tomorrow. You know. Yeah. Kind of a reminder. Maybe I should do that because I forget stuff. Hmm. I post so little on social media about myself anymore. Yeah, um, cat pictures, I do that. And I'm not really on Facebook that much. My Instagram just usually goes there. So... Let's do these last two and then just hang out and chit-chat about things you guys do. You can start typing this out now. We'll respond after these next two things. But what do you guys do on a daily basis or so? So at the end of your time, when you look back across your life, you're like, I have no regrets. And this is something I did to make sure I don't. Okay, this is weird, but here you go. Breathe, hydrate, and sleep. Three of the most basic things in any animal, or still animals no matter what you think, is to drink plenty, sleep enough, and breathe deeply. Sleep is one of the most important things to thinking clearly and being ready to face any challenge the day may present. Drinking enough water, not soda, coffee, or whatever, makes you physically able to function. Breathing. Oh, where do I start with this? <laughs> Getting the proper amount of oxygen to your body affects everything you do. Breathe deeply when stressed or anxious. Making yourself take multiple, at least ten, deep breaths allows you to think clearly and respond better. This is science, folks. Look it up. Sleep enough, drink enough, and breathe right. Last one, and then I'll put the book down and we'll just chat for the last 45 minutes. Time management. Being successful in anything, personal, professional, or anything else, is time management. Whether you're waiting tables, setting up a home, or writing a book, it is a matter of realizing that there are only so many hours in the day and so many minutes in each hour. Setting your schedule so you're the most productive you could be is key to being who you want to be. There's nothing wrong with wasting time and enjoying pleasure activities as long as it's balanced with doing things that move you forward in life. Make lists or schedules, and sticking to them is the key to getting what you want. No one else will do that for you. Kittens. Yeah, hey, kittens. Kitten butt. <laughs> so that's my thoughts that I've learned, whether through my own life experiences. Come here, fish. Talking to other people or just straight-up research. Um. Mm. These are things, if you do these things, make time for the people, have confidence in yourself, learn to listen, speak clearly and concisely. At the end of your life, oh, living your bucket list, doing what makes you happy. Say a leaf in your butt. I, I did say a leaf in your butt. It's delightful. <laughs> I've got 14 of them in mind right now. Uh, Jamin says... I try to post positive messages and funny stuff. That makes a and huge difference. And you succeed. Yeah. And it influences other people's days. Um, they make me happy. Yeah. I like them. These postcards. I have a stack of them next to my computer. And Every once in a while, he'll be like, look at that. That's there funny. we go. Jamin says, living without regrets. Understand that you'll make mistakes, but learn and move on. Do something kind for someone every day. Yeah, Chalk. Don't. He prefers feathers instead of leaves. I don't like feathers because they get that sharp pointy end. Oh my. I just, no, I can't. 
Did I mute myself? No. No, I hear you. Oh, oh, I don't know, Bob. There's a volume button on here. Yeah, when I try to do the volume, it ends up muting me, and I'm like, I don't know. It's uh, just living life, so if if you hear these songs, country songs usually, um, living like there's no tomorrow, whatever. I can't think of the titles. Uh, one of you guys probably know. But people are like, oh, you know, I had this dramatic life moment that made me realize I need to appreciate the people around me. I need to do more of what I want to do instead of putting it off till another year or 10 years or 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, it'll make you happier. It'll make you a more interesting person at the end of your life. No matter what age you are when that time comes. When your life flashes before your eyes, you want to feel like it's that great montage from your favorite show, your own life. And you go, yeah, yeah, even with the bad, I overcame it, moved on, didn't dwell on it. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed each day in some small way or large way. I accomplished things instead of just wishing I would do them. Yes, Jamin. Plan for tomorrow, but live for today. And I tried to get my son to come on with me. Because something I've said is, if you watch a child, and not necessarily a 15-year-old. 15-year-olds are in that transition where they're going from that child, ever hopeful outlook, to the adult bitterness. Um, but if we look at young children, they live life to the fullest. They live in the moment and enjoy what's in front of them right now. We all remember as kids. Maybe they don't do it so much anymore. Parents, kick your ass outside. Oh, you, yeah. You had no toys. They're all inside. They don't let you take them out because you're going to lose them in the grass. What do you do? You you find a stick. You, you, you find a, a rock. It's that, long and brown and sticky. That's right. It's... <laughs> but as an adult we need to realize this too sometimes you won't have your toys to play with doesn't mean you can't be entertained I don't have my toys I got a toy chest over here um, <laughs> I got otters and fishes and zazzles yay there goes I otter. like that. cat truck excuse me you know, I know. Well, I think the temperature has dropped a little. It's a little cooler. That's um, when you have the cold pillow, and that's the best time to sleep is with a cold pillow. Well, yeah. It's the best time. Yeah, definitely. It's a. Uh... <sighs> so, Jamie, what have you been doing all day? I know Chuck is typing on another computer most of the time here. Working. And Kennedy is riding the rails. <laughs> and he stopped in a video game store, a vintage video game store. It's uh, which that's a great example of just enjoying life. I, I'm guessing Kennedy didn't plan that. I'm guessing Kennedy went, "Oh, look, what's that? Let me go look," and walked in and reminisced and enjoyed. Walked out a little happier for the moment. So, what about you, Jamie? And I see you've been, you know, you're you're. Name shows in the list of people who are watching the show, but uh, I know you tend to do other things and sometimes just have it on in the background or not even be home and just have it on. Um, and we do appreciate that because it still builds numbers. And the bottom line is we want to hit on this channel and Andrew's channel an average of 75 viewers and then we hit partner. So that's our Twitch goal at this point, our real goal above and beyond anything else. There you go. Here's Andrew's channel. And tonight we're doing our space adventure. The adventure of the core nuts. That's right. It's, it started out as Andrea's little assassin droid with wires crossed, feeding people the snack, corn nuts. But there's a part of the galaxy called the core, the cluster in the center, and uh, they traveled through that. So it worked out. We wrote core nuts instead. Click Firefly meets Three Stooges. It entertains me, so... The bottom line of life, right? Mm-hmm. Stop. A little bit of happiness, a little bit of fun goes a long way. 
if you appreciate it, you ever have those friends that, whether it's going to a theme park or watching a movie or just hanging out, they're always miserable no matter what. They refuse to enjoy yeah. the moment. And you're like, what the hell is wrong with you? Why, why are you bitching? You know, right there now? were times when I was that friend. And it took a lot of conscious effort and practice to not be that person. It does. And, and you could slip back into it. Not just you, but um, anybody. Well, and I do sometimes, but I have to catch myself. It's practice. It's all practice. It's not going to be perfect in, in no. all at once. So. And again, you're allowed your days. You're allowed your moments of, I'm miserable right now. Okay. I'm going to go watch comedy on, on Netflix. Leave me alone. There we go. And that usually helps. Well, that's a step towards fixing it, mm -hmm. to changing it, and, and that matters. That makes a difference. It's uh, petting cats help. Mm -hmm. Just got back from the hospital doing the pre-surgical tests and stuff to prepare for the for next week nerve block. Whew. See, now I know it's not what I picture in my head whenever I hear nerve block. I picture a block of wood. And they just stick it in there and be like, I, I don't know why. I know it's kind of like a, they sever the nerve or they stick it or not pinch it, tie it in a bow. I'm not sure. But I know there is no block involved. Especially made of wood. True that. Yeah. So what are they doing there, Jamie? What is, I mean, do they just basically cut a nerve? Do they... Get a paper clip and put it on the end. Do they? Uh, I have an extra paper clip laser? if you need it. Laser. Laser. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You know what, Andrea? I think I need to figure out how to just see. It's too many steps. I'm, I'm thinking about the PayPal thing, and and if people want to donate directly, if you go like to PayPal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, hold on, got to scratch that back. You go to PayPal. On your PayPal account, you can go, okay, I want to send money to Travis. Here's his email address. Send it to his friends and family so he gets the full amount. Whereas if you do it through, like, they have a PayPal me. It's paypal.me slash talk of the tavern. And then they keep, oh, a lot. They, they keep like, 33 damn percent. And if you do it through the button down below... I think it's the same thing. So as cute That's as, what I used. Well, that was the PayPal one. Oh. So, you know what? Let me try this. I, mean, I did donate one, um, wherever that was. And that's where you only got, like, a little bit of the dollar. Because I was testing it. Okay. Um, let's do this. What are you doing? What is this? I'm going to do that. Let's see what it does. Watch your screen. Hmm. Give me a second. Oh, I gotta watch the the Twitch yes. screen. Yeah, watch okay. the Twitch screen. Ow. Okay. Give me a second. No. It's logging me in. Nothing. 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 And nothing. Why is my name up there twice on whatever that is? Hmm? Um, on the screen above our pictures, there's... Okay, you gotta follow, and then you got five... Okay, because I did five bits twice to test it. Right. I saw a cat go by. There you go. Now you know. Okay. What? It wouldn't let me do it with PayPal because my name is attached to it, so... I've got to go do it this other way. Um, so let's do this. No idea what Give he's doing. Choice to credit card. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't have my wallet on me, do I? Uh, what is the I new don't know. code? I think it's this. I don't know. It might not allow me to do this either. I don't know. Let's find out. I'm just trying to test it with this way to see what it does. 
I tested it once. Okay, I can't there we do go. It, so. it did it. Mm hmm. Oh, look at that. Okay. I can't see what it says because it's below the thing, but. That's cool. Nice. So, yeah, it worked. Oh, it's a dollar. Yay. See, so now you have like a dollar thirty because I donated. A dollar sixty-seven, I believe it is. Oh. Wow. So, what is the fee they took out of that one? I don't know. Oh, I'll, I'll know when they send it to me. It's, I guess. Okay. I, I don't know either. So. Hmm. I, I really. I, I cheated and threw a dollar at myself. Mm. Which is. I think, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking. I, I'm just thinking about a nap right now, and. I may be able to lay down for 20 minutes before the next game, so... Mm -hmm. Just... Because we're almost done here. We have a half hour left. I might Just... actually plan a little of the game out for tonight, uh, if I have time to do it. <laughs> um, we also should well, eat before go. the game, right? We also what? Should eat before the game. I think I'd rather nap. You know, because you know, I, I ate those crepes, and I've been fighting sleep ever since, because, you know, carbs. Mm. Carbs, you yeah, know, they were so good, but like with pancakes, even the French pancakes, you still need a nap afterwards. I need a nap. Afterwards. So, how would you rate those carbs? What do you mean? I just want to know if you're a carburetor. Um, I I have to go. Go on. Okay, now I'm going to keep you guys entertained here. It's, uh, I'm going to talk. Okay. So, let's see here. There we go. She's making sure she's muted so she doesn't interrupt us. Oh, let's see here. So, we've got 25 minutes left. Tomorrow, we're doing something similar to what we did today. And tonight, of course, we have the game on Andrew's channel, the Space Adventures. Feel free to join us and comment. There are times we ask you guys for your input and help to help decide something. So, that's always good. And that's on Andrew's channel, which the link is in the chat right there above Skipper's last comment. Next Monday on Talk of the Tavern, Monday night, we're discussing the Lizard Man conspiracy of the ones trying to take over the world, the aliens and lizards. So, that'll be a good time. It's today with the having no regrets in life. Oh... I think some of the big key things are the forgive and forget. Living in the moment instead of living in the past or the future. And these two tie together very well. With the forgiving and forgetting, as I said, forgiving is removing the power from the person who hurt you. You're not saying it's okay to do what you did. You're saying, I'm over it. And I'm removing your ability to make me emotionally react make me angry or sad or whatever. That's the forgiving part, not condoning their actions. The forgetting part is not removing it from your memory. It's dropping the emotional baggage that went with it. That's the forgetting. Allowing yourself to move on and not constantly be influenced by the power of that event or moment, whether it's a person or a thing. I mean, it could be a car accident. Um, it could be, you know, somebody who did you wrong. Hmm. Okay, so they stick an 8-inch gauge needle in my back, go up under the rib to, the f to freeze burn the intercostal nerve. I'm awake for the procedure, but they give me so much drugs that you don't care. Oh, man, I bet you're fucking funny when you're all doped up like that, saying all kinds of stupid shit. I bet you are. Jamin, this might not be something to ask on air, but at one point in time, you said you were... And maybe it was your disability that you were going for. You were looking at some kind of settlement... Or basically, a financial thing to help you in your life. Did you get that, man? Did you finally get that help that you needed and deserved? 
I hope so. I hope so. Welcome back, Andrea. You're still muted. Muted. I hear now? you. Yes, I hear you now. Because uh, it wasn't muted on Skype. I hate this. I hit the button. It's only for a couple of minutes because the call got dropped. So. Okay. So you'll be busting out of here in a minute when it comes. Probably. Back. I have had a lot of phone calls while we we're in this show. I don't know what's going on there, mm -hmm. but it's nobody with, with names that I know. Um, Are there names? No. Oh. No, that's that's basically what I'm getting at. There. Maybe it's Chuck asking about rubbing lotion on the skin and crossing streams. It could be, but he's got to he's got to keep it on the chat. I can't just pick up the phone for you <laughs> right now, Chuck. That's, uh, no leaves, feathers, no leaves. Hmm. Horrible. Good, good. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I thought you had said it had moved forward, but I didn't remember, and I'm glad to hear. Just so everybody else knows, Jamin didn't win the lottery or anything like that. He just got the financial backing that he needed to, I don't know, survive after years of suffering. And now we have him around for many more years where we can suffer from his sense of humor. Here's what? Or, or him suffer from ours. Yeah, tomato, tomato. There's a reason we both keep hanging out with each other. <laughs> and, and Jamin, I think we have told you this before, but we have things for you here. We have more stuff for your steampunk closet of goodness. or Yeah, and props and things. We'll get out there eventually. Yeah, yeah, one of us will finally, you know, be in the same place in the same space as the other again. one. Again, I mean, it happened, so it'll happen again. It was great of you guys to come up. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, I can't imagine ever offering you a place to sleep, though, Jamin, just because of your back and everything. I'm like, I'd be terrified to offer a place to sleep. Just because I yeah, can't well, imagine Well, the futon is, the futon's horrible, and the couch isn't that. Yeah. <laughs> so not. The couch is okay for a nap. No. Nope not a night's sleep. The futon no. is good if you're under 22. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you're a it's real adult, mm, no, not, not, not in college or it's not your first apartment. No. Futons aren't good. You'd be better off us dropping a sleeping bag on the floor in the library and going, there you go. <laughs> How about it? Yeah, it's true. What yeah. we can do, we'll just pile up all the cats. <laughs> They're like feathers with claws. <laughs> that little pointy part. So that's all right, yeah. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. I have. Here's Squirrel. She's coming over. Oh, there she is, little baby. Sneaking through. With her anime eyes. Mm -hmm. And she's laying down here next to... She did not really... You, they didn't see her on camera. No. She's, no. Tiny. she's so tiny. Well, compared to the others, she's actually a pretty average sized cat. Uh, not for this house. Yeah, G Rap is on the side table. Fish is on top of it. Here's Otter over here. There's Zazzle there. I got five of them in here. And I thought well, Cobble was in here earlier. None of them are in here because I closed the door. You're a meanie. Well, after last night getting ready for the game and. Harry Housen cat. He's Harold when he's naughty. So Harold came in and jumped up on my pile of gaming stuff. Box of dice all over the room. I don't think I've picked them all up. Under a chair. By the way, Jamin said I can do a sleeping bag on the floor okay for a couple of nights. Well, we're not putting you up for that damn long. But at least one night. <laughs> especially after driving that distance. Can Jewel handle the floor? You know, with the sleeping bag. And we do have air mattresses. We just want to keep the door closed so the cats don't come in and go, Hey, yeah. air mattress. Psst. And as yeah. for your boy, he's young enough. He, to, he can get the couch for the futon. Or, uh, yeah, he, he's young enough floor. for the futon. <laughs> yeah. Um, he may be hanging off of it because he's very tall. You know, it's amazing. Sometimes when just sleeping on the floor for one night, you feel better. Well, because then your everything just kind of falls in alignment because you don't have that right. give like a mattress. Sometimes I have to lay on the floor. 
and do the backstroke across the living room. And, and once I lay on the floor, I don't get up because I can't. <laughs> like a turtle. I just, I gotta show this. Hold on a second, guys, here. What is it? So there you guys go. That's what I'm dealing with right now. What is it? Oh my god, that's adorable. It's just a pile of cats. Here's otter and squirrel and fish and zazzle. I mean, and then down here under the table that these three are on is giraffe. See, what I see on the screen, on the Twitch screen, is not what I see on my Skype screen. Correct. Which is crazy because on my Skype screen, my background looks nice. I look on Twitch and you see the the power cord and I'm like, no. Yeah, air mattress and sleeping bag together. Well, well shit, are we planning a, a sleepover? We're going to have a sleepover. Hold on, I'm readjusting the camera back to where it was. Okay. Well, you need to come out one time at least so we can have a big old bonfire with everybody because we yeah. have so much wood. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's one of those things. We'll stay up till 2 in the morning burning my wood. Well, if you have a camper or something you could bring out, you know, um, Elizabeth, she likes to bring her tent and throw it in the backyard. That's true. As long as it's not springtime. For the tent in the backyard because the ground here gets so soft and moist it's well i'm like, thinking it's like a delicious baked good <laughs> i'm thinking in the summer beginning of fall have a party because it won't be too hot so we can do a bonfire the bonfire bye gotta run and do some stuff on the truck while i have chris say hello to chris for us and uh hey man take it easy don't don't hurt yourself any worse than you already broke yourself so, thanks for hanging out, popping in, saying hello, and uh, good luck with next week if for some reason we don't see you between now and then, okay? We're thinking about you in the creepy way. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think it'd be really nice to do a party. Oh, yeah. And have everyone out with their camper or their, their tents. Or there are, you know what? Actually, that would be kind of nice, especially if we did in the fall when there's you know less summer bugs, mm -hmm. and told everybody bring your tent, yeah, and just stay all day long and go to your tent when you're ready to go to bed. If that means you're going to bed at four in the morning, then go to bed at four in the morning. If that means or at ten o'clock you're heading for your tent. See ya. Or you know, if they have a sleeping bag and want to sleep on the floor or the couch or whatever, that's cool too. So. True. And we can keep the cats in the back, so... We don't have to. We can just keep the doors open and let people come and go. Absolutely. Have Unless they really want to go on the tree, you know, whatever, but... And for that matter, if they have a camper, if they need electric, we can run an extension cord okay. if it runs off 110. If it runs off yeah. 220, yeah. You're, you're out of luck. Hopefully you got a solar panel. You can charge some shit up. It's a... Yeah. So what I was saying earlier, to totally change topics, mm -hmm. is, just so everybody knows, the games we're playing on Andrea's channel are Marvel Superheroes, which is died in the 80s, but I like the system, so I'm using it. The mm -hmm. Star Wars Edge of the Empire system, which is still for sale. And then the White Wolf system, who did Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, etc. But et we're not playing Vampire. No, we're not. Just so everybody knows. We're not, because yeah. I don't want... We're playing Monster Hunters. We call it Crypto Mysteries. Um, it's our own feel. We're just using their rules for the rolling of dice and That's stuff. That's the only thing. So, um, and you got to realize that these things have more than just vampires in the world. The monsters they're hunting isn't just vampires. That's only a small portion of the crazy monsters they'll face. Um, I'm nervous about that one a little bit. The crypto one? Yeah, yeah. Why? Well, see, I don't want to make it like television. Where Are you, you drinking brandy with a pinky up? Uh, usually. <laughs> You're so fancy. <laughs> I got two pinkies up. Hmm. 
That's yeah, true, Kennedy. Kennedy says, unless we're really bad vampire hunters or monster hunters, we might be playing vampires. And that's something down the road <sighs> as we change. If a player's like, well, I want to be a vampire. Okay, well, we could talk about it. Um, there's other creatures in there also that, but for now we're playing normal humans. Even with the, we're, we're using, uh, Hunter the Reckoning is the rule book from the White Wolf system that we're primarily using. I do want a copy of Hunters Hunted so I can incorporate those rules because they're similar but different. Mm -hmm. Um, it's before they came out with their own monster hunting system, essentially. And, okay, we, uh... It okay. looks like we have more people. New people. Hi, guys. We do. Good to see you guys. Good so what is that you. thing I have to type? Uh, exclamation point share. Um, and guys, uh, to let us know what your vices are. What are you drinking? What do you got? So, uh, and what are some of the ways you enjoy life? Yeah, what, uh, when you're going through life, how do you make sure at the end of your time you don't regret things you have either have done or things... That you never got to do. How do you avoid that? <sighs> but we're talking about gaming now. We do tabletop role-playing game on Andrea's channel, which we have a game tonight. But we're talking about crypto mysteries that we play on Tuesdays and why I'm a little bit anxious as we explore that. See, I don't want it to be every episode you did feed a different monster. Um, Not I for that to, one. <laughs> well, I kind of want it to be one monster or monster type per season mm -hmm. and just so everybody knows we're playing seasons as in here's the spring here's the summer here's the fall season of that game and that gives us a chance to have a definitive stopping point to this storyline mm -hmm. and move on to the next storyline this gives us 12 gaming shows uh, thus 12 chapters yes see Ken or Kennedy uh, sorry Chuck says I partake in the ill-gotten souls of others. It's my vice. Mm. See, and that's a beautiful thing right there. It's uh, usurping and devouring the souls of other people. It, well, it, it's a delicacy. It's an art. And it's not something you just go out on the street and do. It's you have to work for that. You have to put it's a lot of effort in it. You know, those are just like red kidney beans, if I'm not mistaken. I thought they were called toe beans. They were like to I don't know. Ew. I don't know. But anyhow, we what, discussed that one day. What I'm worried about, yeah, when the uh, cannibalism show, cooking and cannibalism. Um, what I'm concerned about is, can I give enough content to not have a monster every show? And I know the answer is yes, absolutely, I can because I could build the mystery, I could build the suspense. Um, there's the encounters here and there. Wait, wait, what? That, and I fund Little Person Blood Sports MMA. Is that a thing? Send me a link. Hold on, I'm just picturing this whole thing in my head right now. I'll be right back. <laughs> that is <laughs> well, hilarious at the same time. But is that a thing? <laughs> Send me a link, man. Just saying. But yeah, I think I can give the suspense Hi. each episode and the build up and oh, yeah. the hints and the mysteries and you know Yeah. Yeah, monster lasts more than one gaming session. It is possible at the end of the season you don't even defeat the monster. Because keep in mind, Kennedy, mm -hmm. these monsters might not be the little peon that is just, you know, harassing people that you can go kill. The little MMA. Yeah. They might be the big mastermind that's throwing other things at you in the long run. Uh, especially if they're beings that have lived centuries. That's not a one-day job. Well, yeah. So there'll be that. Um... Yes, yeah, Supernatural did it uh, in a way. Um, yeah, so the big thing is to keep you guys engaged in the story moving forward without you. And I'm not saying you might not get something every 
episode. But one episode might be spent the whole – this might sound boring, but believe me, it will be more interesting than it sounds. <laughs> Imagine you're going to research this person. So you go to the largest library in the city, and you start pulling up documentation or records and searching through it. And you have to deal with the little old biddy who runs the library. Yes. And the janitor that keeps telling you about the things in the dark in the library and how the library is haunted. And then the noise oh. is that you're unsure of what they are. It's and that, battery operated. And that little kid with those huge oversized glasses that obviously wasn't meant for him. Who keeps on coming up asking you if you're ghost hunters. Are you? All while you're searching for the answer about a mummy who walked out of somewhere. Hmm. Yes, you, you mentioned that earlier, faith versus science. See, this is going to come out of my personal belief system. Because in my teens, I heavily explored different faiths. From Christian faiths to other faiths to... Uh, you gotta have faith. Faith, faith, faith. faith. Oh, yeah. That's, That's my jam. No, it's like, oh, shit. That's right. I love Keanu. Isn't that Keanu? That is yeah, Keanu. It's a great that movie. Keanu. Um, but, yeah, with faith versus science, when I had a... Uh, and by the way, throughout my life, as I have continued to investigate this, I have come to certain conclusions that I'm looking forward to being proven wrong, but they haven't yet. And that's basically the science side. Um, but with the faith side, I often related faith to science and science to faith. I don't see why they need to be so conflicting with each other. I don't see why faith can't easily incorporate. It just... Hey! Whoop, whoop! There's the Elizabeth. Good to <gasps> you. With the what? Thank you for showing us your bits. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. The little things. So, uh, what I'm saying here is, uh, why can't faith embrace science and go, look, I believe in a god this god, this belief system, but my god is all-powerful, so it would make sense as a logical being who moved forward in a process that can be tracked scientifically. And mm -hmm. as for science, science says there's no beginning, there's no end. It, it, something comes from... Everything comes from something. There's never nothing. Energy and matter can never be destroyed or created, it can only change forms from matter to energy. So with that concept, science itself is looking at there's no beginning to anything. It's just a transformation. The new chapter. Chuck says, they lie and say you got a dollar for the gin fund when you only got 67 cents. Uh, Chuck, I'm not sure. Andrea threw a dollar through PayPal. PayPal went, hey, we're going to keep our 33%. Fuck you. Thank you. Enjoy your 67 cents. I did a dollar through the actual link, and it shows a dollar. What will I actually get? This is a separate thing. I, I changed the link is what I did. And this is through something called Who Steam knows? Labs. So I don't know how much I'll see when that pays out from those donations. Uh, it might be $0.67, cents or it might be the full dollar, because this is a different way of doing it. So it's showing a dollar. I'm hoping that means a dollar is coming to me. But I'll let you know what I know. See. Right now, I don't fucking know. Um, and maybe if I go to the the extension that's processing this, it'll tell me, huh, yeah, they gave you this, but you're actually getting this. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, who knows? What I'd really recommend is you throw another 34 at it in the name of Jin. Here's to Jin. Here, here. And then it'll be complete, and I'll, I'll, I'll see what they do. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm just begging for money. Keep your damn money. Do not pay for my liquor. That's just... You don't need that. Buy your own liquor. And then toast me on the show. Fucker. Who are you talking to? Chuck? Chuck. In, the, in this particular instance. How much out of... Chuck! Money? Just buy some alcohol. Bring it here and share with him. 
Actually, that's a good plan, Chuck. You drive up here. We'll put you up. We'll uh, have some drinks and get on the show. He'll put you up, all right. Actually, uh, Kennedy, <laughs> Patreon is the best way to give when it comes to what percentage they take out. They are the ones that take the smallest percentage. I want to say it's 10 to 12% that they keep compared to the stuff here on Twitch. When you guys subscribe and Kennedy, I want to go, oh, go subscribe, Kennedy. But the bottom line is you throw $5, I get 250 You throw 25 for the highest well, subscription, I get 1250 But if, you ha if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. That's and true. he still gets 250 that's so oh, that's why I push the Amazon. See, I'm looking at Elizabeth. She's a subscriber. Elizabeth, is my heart shaking? Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Here we go. There's my heart. Boom, 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 boom. Um, yeah, and, and, and I do appreciate that. Just as Twitch people come and view us, I push the subscriptions because they know what the subscriptions are. And I when I did all the little things, the images below... Um, there, I put the Patreon up there and I asked Andrea, I'm like, do you think I should describe what Patreon is? Because I had it there before and I'm like, you know what? No. Either they know what it is or they don't. Um, they can always click on it and see what it is. That's that's the thing, you know. But there is a mailing address. He accepts cash, money orders. Absolutely. Yeah, you right know. under wish list. It says, or items can be mailed directly to our P.O. Box. Mm -hmm. We don't want you freaky people showing up on our doorstep. We Dude, want you freaky people already know. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, we want specific freaky people to show up on our doorstep, not random freaky people. So, uh, yeah, if you're a freaky person and you have our address, that means that, uh, yeah, we, we... That means we approve. You're tavern approved. <gasps> That's so cool. I want stickers that say tavern approved. <laughs> we could just print them up on a computer. Oh, if we could get a printer that would work. Uh, and mine works, but I'm all out of ink because I had to use it. Anyway. <laughs> um, Tavern approved, that's right. Tavern approved. Tavern approved. Not the same. No, it's got to be after hours and it's got to be Jim Gaffigan. And... What was I rambling on about? I have no idea, but we need to figure out who we're going to raid oh. and all that good stuff because it is almost 6 o'clock. I'll figure it out in a minute. Guys, don't forget, Andrew's going to post a link right here, right now, to her channel. We are going to be back on in two hours doing a game, a space adventure. It's like Firefly meets Three Stooges. Hilarious. Inappropriate. Go ahead um, and follow my channel, and it'll let you know when we're live. Um, there is a ticker under the video screen to tell you it's a countdown, basically, to let you know when we start. So, I want to read Bonsai Baby. What do you think? Yeah, she's fun. She is fun, and I love the creativity part she's of just things. Everything. She goes from room to room doing different stuff, or yeah. garage, yeah. or whatever it is. Andrea, I've realized why so many people stream cooking. Because they're hungry. Yeah. And, and, and they're still live on their stream. They're like, fuck, how do I eat and stream? I guess I'm broadcasting cooking. Uh, See, I would, but I don't want to cook. I just want to eat. So you can cook, and then I'll eat. I, I actually considered that. I'm like, if we ran the show all the way through these two hours. Because what we need the two hours for. Is, is to cook. Is to cook and eat, as well as upload the stuff to YouTube, etc. So, yeah. I'm, but if we uh, just keep going, you know. And then you could raid my stream. Yeah, I could. But I don't I don't think our internet connection is strong enough for that. We'll, well basically, I would have to set something up in the kitchen, even if it's just my phone. Carry a laptop. I can take my laptop out there. I can carry it out there right now. I can, too, but then I lose a second monitor and all this other stuff, and it's hard to do the Skype and add you in and all that. Oh no, I'll just walk into the kitchen. On your stream. You don't need to Skype me. Oh, you're just saying you'd hang out with me in the kitchen while I cook. And then when it's time for mine, you just raid mine. Who are you waving at? Crows. Oh. They're out there looking for my nuts. <laughs> Three of them have landed. No. 
Well, yeah, that's... Uh, Where's Aiden? I need to get him to go fling my nuts. It's going to be a fun time tonight, guys. We have Robert Turk joining us, who is Gander Snitch Goblin, who has now just published his third or fourth game. Fourth game, I think, uh, from WickedClever.com, yeah. Wicked-Clever.com. He's joining us. He is great fun. We have known him for years. We also have Steven, who works with Vendeliacon. Um, and he's new to gaming. Brand new. Never gamed before in his life. Oh, so this is going to be fun. Um, and just like Tuesday nights, Kennedy hasn't gamed in decades. And Richard Knowles, who's joining us, hasn't ever gamed. Um, my point of telling you guys this is... He's our other Brit for those people. We welcome new gamers. Yeah. Some people are like, oh, I can't play. I've never played. Drop! Drop! Hey! Drop. So, you know, if anybody wants to be considered for a game, send a message. Um, there is a waiting list, but... Like Travis said earlier, we do seasons, so each season, like spring, fall, summer, you know, all of that. You know what? Hold on a second, because Drop is here popping in in the last couple seconds. Yeah, he is. I am going to pull up Discord. <laughs> Hold on. It's, it's right in front of your face. Um, oh, it's got fucking updates. Can I move this shit? Yes. Moved it off your screen. Okay, oh. Drop, give me a second. I'm actually getting in my username. Sorry I didn't communicate with you yesterday. A few things came up. And we had to take care of it. So, yeah, that's why you didn't hear from us. We had to uh, bolt and take care of some things. So, um, now, Drop, you said you're interested in gaming. Is that correct? And, Drop, do you want me to use your real name? Or, oh, fuck, you're putting all kinds of shit up in front of you. That's okay. Okay. Now... Hold on a second. I gotta figure out how to tell my name. Um, user settings. My account. Voice and video. Where the hell do they tell my name? What is wrong with them? I don't know. I don't know. Either. I mean, I could open mine and see. Okay. So, Drop says, yes, I'm interested in gaming. Were you interested in a specific game? Crypto Mysteries, which is a steampunk Cthulhu meets Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Um, the Space Adventures. Oh, yeah. Who just which subscribed to us. Stoogers. Stoogers? Actually, what this is what I wanted to say. Chuck, thank you for subscribing <gasps> oh, to Twitch here, Prime. Here. Now change ticker. Keep in mind, if you have Twitch Prime, you can also subscribe. Costs you nothing, man. If you don't, or else if you su subscribe to a different channel, don't even worry about it. Don't think twice about it. Just throwing it out there. Um, okay, where the hell is my... I'm trying to find it, but I went to look at the um, thing on the screen. Add friend. Discord. I don't even know who that is. I'm going to add him. I don't oh, think I can change my name. Pending. Mine's a whole name. Oh. Okay. I have added everybody. Let's see. There's my mentions. New group. Mm hmm. Drop. Where do I find my username at? Bottom of the screen. Bottom of the screen. Well, the bottom of the screen has part of my username and the rest is hidden. Click on it. It'll come up. Will it? Well, I clicked on the um, cog thing and I changed mine. My username is Andrea Lechat1578. Well, I have streamer mode enabled. Does that matter? I don't know. I see. I'm on my account and it's like streamer mode enabled, um, which I'm guessing I'm going to want to learn about anyway. I have Fortnite on mine, so I can play that. I don't know. I don't know. Either. But yeah, if you. If you click on the little cog thing that says user settings, it'll bring up everything with your name, and you can edit it. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I clicked on my account. Streamer mode. Um, enabled. Enable streamer mode. Let's unenable that. Hide personal information. Yeah, it's not showing. I need this. Okay, there we go. Guys, I am throwing my... You want to throw the raid up there? Uh, I already got the raid set up, which we have to go do that so we can get some food and whatnot. Uh, 
here. Yeah. That, yes. That is my Discord name. Add me, etc. Um, also, Sean, do you want your real name? Do you want me to call you Drop? Let me know. Uh, when on air. And also, with the gaming thing, are you interested in a specific game or just any game? Because I need to know which waiting list to put you on. Okay. Other than that, guys, thanks for joining us. Join us tomorrow for this Hangout stuff. We will see you then. I'm putting this music up. Thanks for joining us. We are out of here. And again tonight, you are Toast the one thing you. that makes the show what it is. Here's to you, don't and I don't hear Don't forget to join us at the Tavern next week. Until then, have fun, it, buddy, keep no learning, your and be good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day and steamy dreams every night. Okay, we're out of here. Raid's going on. See you there, guys.